Stressed about being hospitalized? Breathe and relax. We have the ultimate hospital plan for you that won't cost an arm and a leg. Oxygen Hospital Plan gives you unlimited in-hospital cover to ensure you are protected no matter what happens. But what about day-to-day -day cover? With Oxygen, you can customize your day-to-day -day benefits and what you don't use rolls over to the next year. Still not convinced? Well, we have more to offer. Oxygen also includes $10 million international emergency medical cover and premium protection. Take a breath with Oxygen. SMS Oxygen to 999 and we'll contact you. I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions in CPR. Place one hand like this, interlace your fingers of the other hand through that hand, place the palm of your hands in the lower half of the sternum on the patient, compress at least five centimeters at a rate of at least 100 beats per minute. For any emergencies, feel free to call Emed Rescue 24 at 924. The idea of evolution is that life on Earth slowly changes over time. Change involves adapting for the better. Change involves innovating yourself. Arriving at a fresh phase, it means going the extra mile setting the tone for generations to come. Renaissance Health Medical Aid Fund, now RMA. RMA, your health comes first. Today I'm gonna to talk about burn wounds and burn wound care at home. If you come across a patient with a burn wound, please don't put on butter ointments or any home remedies. Just run the wound under tepid water for at least 10 minutes and then cover the wound with a damp cloth. If you come across a patient with a wound of more than 5 centimeters, please don't refrain to call Emet Rescue at 924. joined by Senya all the way from Ukraine. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here in our country. Thank Please you. do tell us, how is it here? How are you loving it so far? How have you found the weather here in Namibia? Have you tasted the food here? Yeah, just run us through that. Um, okay, so I came yesterday. Uh, it was a long trip. Uh, I came from Turkey. I'm not, I'm not living in Ukraine right now. So I drove, I drove through all Namibia from Winhook, so I saw a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Uh, quite different from what uh, I've got used to mostly about the food. Um, I don't know, just went to the supermarket and I found almost everything and prices are okay. <laughs> so the hospitality, yeah, I mentioned the people are really nice. So. That's it. Okay, well, you had to fly all the way from Turkey. Yes. That's a lot of, that's tiredness. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, preparations-wise, since you just flew in yesterday, how, how are you getting ready for the, uh, for, the, for, for, your, for the big cup tomorrow? Oh, I hope I, uh, I'll uh, recover. Mm -hmm. uh, I, had, I have two nights mm -hmm. 
for recovering. So mostly I start, uh, I try, uh, I'm trying to sit or to lay down, mm -hmm. <laughs> relax, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of training. So that's it, let's see. <laughs>around a beacon and back into the water so we have technical officers at all points um, seeing what they're doing they're holding on to this bar and then they have to let go they're gonna be sprinting into the water and you'll probably see them form two lines and the ladies are off it's quite an international field we have numerous athletes from 22 different countries and this is for ITU points so important race it's quite a um, great event for Namibia to be hosting this you can see this is going to be quick, it's going to be faster, probably much faster than the sprint event um, that was happened earlier or any of the other four events that happened earlier today. So we can see the ladies going at it. Um, and this is a 750 meter swim as we've said. They'll be going around that first boy, keeping the boy on their left shoulder. And um, you'll see many of these uh, ladies looking up and sighting, which is very different from when they do it in a pool because they look up to be able to see the boy in front of them. And uh, also they'll probably be forming two or three spearheads because you gain a lot by sitting on the feet or on the waist of some other athlete ahead of you. You can save 25, maybe up to 35, 40% um, just by sitting there because it means you don't have to sight, specifically if you sit alongside the, sw the strongest uh, swimmers. Um, and then you're able to just concentrate on you uh, putting out the stroke and seeing how many strokes you can put out while they do that. So we can already see there is a group of ladies in the front um, all going towards that, that boy and then we have three or four stragglers off the side. And remember we'll be doing two laps of this, two laps. So this morning we had beautiful mist over the area and we could see that uh, it's quite difficult to, with visibility but right now we're seeing uh, these ladies come around that first boy and you'll see them there'll be quite a bit of jostling as they try and get around that boy and they're moving around and they'll be heading and sighting towards the second boy shortly and then this group will come out and um, they'll be running up onto the beach sand and around the um, around the beacon and going back in for a second lap so unlike this morning where we started out with a water temperature of about 15 degrees celsius and uh, the air, ambient air temperature at about 20, we're now up to 26 degrees Celsius. So lots of these ladies will be feeling that uh, heat on their wetsuits because all their wetsuits are, are black absorbent material meant specifically for the cold. And they're wearing them because more out of a position of buoyancy and allowing them to be more efficient than for them to do, be doing it out of uh, a, um, a place of actually using it for the for the uh, for the cold uh, we heard earlier that the water temperature was up to 19 degrees celsius so over a longer event of a uh, half ironman 1.9 kilometer swim or a full ironman 3.8 that will make a significant difference to sweating precipitation and to the to dehydration and, and how much rehydration they would have to do but over 350 meters is not 375 is not going to make that big a difference uh, we see them coming around the second boy and everybody has to pass by with their left shoulder around that. We saw earlier that the para-athlete had not gone around with his left shoulder, so they made him go back, and that's a penalty at this speed is very significant. Um, also, there's no cloud cover whatsoever, so we'll see these ladies coming out towards the boy in the shallow end, again around their left uh, shoulder, and then they'll be running out, and we'll be able to see from their form who comes out there. Um, and uh, remember, as we were saying earlier, in the earlier races, that going from this upper body 
position and upper body strength and uh, using your upper body to having to run onto the beach, that actually they practice that because uh, there's a significant difference um, and uh, to the amount of blood that's flowing through your legs at that time. And uh, it actually is quite taxing doing that. You can see lady on the left <coughs> now moving ahead. Um, and everybody wants to find the shortest distance to the beach. There's also a little bit of swell, which wasn't there this morning, and a little bit of a wind, and there's a light breeze, which will actually be pleasant because it will make the day easier. They're coming around that last boy now. Um, and then they'll be running out onto the beach around a beacon. We'll see that happening now. Okay, the lady's coming out. Be able to see who that is. So you can see them running up. It's number five, Rani. Scrabania, she's out. She's in a gr leading group of ladies of about three or four, and then there's another group. There's Bridget and Hannah that are going in, and we see this leading group uh, coming around. And they'll try and stay on each other's uh, feet so that they can get them as much as they can of the uh, um, of a slip. And also because um, the front girls then have to sight. You'll see them lift their heads forward instead of sideways. So they'll take a breath towards the front so they can actually sight for the boy. And then they'll stay on that line because un unlike in a pool, uh, there's no line at the bottom of the beach that you're able to just uh, use to see um, and to sight with. So th they'll do that. We can see them coming around for the second loop. They're heading out to that first boy that we started out with. Beautiful long strokes. We can see these, uh, these two in the front. Athlete's just sitting on her hips and possibly coming past her. That third athlete, you'll try and see that they all try and stay as close to each other as possible. And that's significant for when they have a run of about 350 meters up into transition. It allows them to bike together and that makes a significant difference on the bike. So, as I was saying earlier, you can't lose the swim. Um, you can't uh, win the race on the swim, but you can definitely lose the race. And you can see the swell playing a bit of uh, havoc on the athletes because uh, that boy has now drifted uh, towards the left and they're now having to swim and correct their course to go around it. Um, and that happens as the, <laughs> as the waves come in and out in this little beautiful cove here in Swakopmund, uh, known as the Muela, and they'll, um, they'll be going towards that. And the water's nice and clean at the moment, so that's great. They'll be able to see in the water in front of them and be able to see towards the, uh, the next buoy because there isn't mist like there was this morning. Much easier to sight and their visibility is much clearer. Also can see that there are... Um, our TV crew right next to them being able to uh, just film everything live for us right now but also to be there um, in a lifeguarding uh, position in these athletes you're not too worried about um, somebody needing a lifeguard as regards drowning or having difficulty but um, it's uh, often they do get an elbow into each other or somebody's goggles are knocked into their face and that can cause quite a reaction and then they need assistance so let's just see how they go along there. Those two at the back have been swimming into each other and that makes a difference. And you can see this front group, how it looks like it's flowing because they're all staying within the slipstream of the other girl, of the other lady behind them. So there's the two in front and you can see there's a real battle to get that left shoulder into that boy. They're, they're going to push each other right into the side of that boy. And this just raises the level of competition, adrenaline, <laughs> and the... <laughs> amount of blood flowing through their veins so they're coming towards the towards the last boy now both of them beautiful strokes in the front there all four or five of these ladies in the front doing really well by getting that going and uh, we can see them coming now they're going to try and get that left shoulder as close to around that uh, last boy as possible and then we're going to we're going to get them. You can see the water is a lot more choppy than it was before. And they're going to go around that last boy. And then they're going to be running out onto the beach. And um, yeah, so the transition from swimming into 
running out into the transition zone again is something that is trained for it's something that they that they practice repeatedly because it's not easy also trying to get off your your wetsuit remember they they take off their where they allow to loosen their wetsuits but not take them off completely and uh, that only happens in the transition zone where each of them have a designated box into which they have to put all of the swim gear that they've used and we can see them coming around that last one and they'll probably use the swell or the waves just to get into the beach because the bike is probably the most significant part of this uh, race um, yeah as they come up the beach there beautiful and the ladies we expected to be in the lead are there um, Ronnie Scrabania they're just gonna get those arms loose and get them uh, get their suits off at the top as they get in and come past us here in transition you can see that third athlete now coming around them she wants to get a transition far first and faster than they are this is the swim in area and they'll go all around to the designated spot where their bike is remember they may not put on their they may not touch their bikes until they've uh, put on their helmets both the British athletes there together and there's Rachel Klammer in fifth from the Netherlands we can see some of the South African athletes coming in um, as we move through the field South Africa well represented amongst the ladies uh yeah, so uh, the race being uh, in our neighboring uh, countries, uh, in, in Namibia, a country neighboring in the background there, we can even see Nathan Chase <laughs> that won the earlier uh, sprint event. Looking to this level, he raced just below these athletes last week in the, in the group below them. And there we see Rachel Klammer off to a very good start, uh, making up a massive amount of time just in the being efficient <clears throat> um, and there's a group of about four or five ladies that are off the front and even uh, one of the South Africans in that group so let's see what the ladies can do if they're going to be able to stick together and be able to go there's Tiernison also Bridget Tiernison South African going out in the group just behind them here comes Henri Krugel the Namibian the only Namibian in the in this elite event uh, both for men and women coming out of the swim probably not her strongest she's a phenomenal biker so we'll see what she can make up on the bike but this group is now a group of four ladies um, and they are even going to give, give it horns this is 20 kilometers you'll see that they'll be doing the um, loops um, four loops of five kilometers we've got absolute we've got total road closure so these ladies don't have to worry about any traffic they do have to worry about the speed bumps that they'll be going over and that is important that they just uh, just because it just can just take them out of their cadence or out of their rhythm so we'll see what uh, that does for them so in the lead we have these four ladies and um, amongst them is Rachel Klammer from the Netherlands um, and then we will get the other names shortly as we go to the timing Do we have any Namibians in this field? Yeah, so there we've just we've just seen Henri Krugel go past um, us now, go up this hill, okay, and then uh, she's got another girl shortly on uh, behind her. Now Henri is a phenomenal biker, so we'll see what she can do on the bike um, in catching um, and uh, getting out there and catching these other ladies. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so uh, that leading group of four, we still have one lady in the water. And then we'll be able to close off the uh, swim section of the course yes. as she comes out. Oh, Josette Chiari, all the way from Kenya. She's going to run up there and then come into transition. And it's so great to see um, other African countries also taking part and just getting that exposure 
And you know, we, we, we know that she may not be at the competitive end of the race, but it's important because this is how we raise the awareness in their country, how we raise the, uh, uh, the, the level of the sport and raise the level of competition. There's nothing like experience. So these four girls right in the front working very well together and we can see that they are rotating beautifully. There's Barbara de Koenig from the Netherlands as well as Rachel Klamer from the Netherlands. And then we've got um, two other girls. I think it's Romania Kajazova. Um... What, what do you uh, expect of Andri? Um, Andri's going to give it a good go as a Namibian. And I mean, obviously, for us supporting Namibia, we, we really wanted to give it a good go. But um, she um, she's primarily a cyclist, and that way is most of the racing will happen. So we'll see what she manages to do on the bike. I think she'll have a phenomenal bike uh, um, uh, split, and we'll see what comes of that. These first four ladies are really... They're really putting it together and they're going to rotate. We can see the other ladies behind them. There's a group of two, four, six that are possibly 30 to 45 seconds behind them. And we'll see what can become of that um, as they turn. Uh, there's also, there's even two South Africans in that group. We'll see what becomes of that. in total. Very, very good field, very competitive field. This race is going to be very fast. Conditions are superb. We've got a great weather. It's not too hot. Um, and we'll take it from there. So the ladies off to a flying start. The last uh, lady was a Kenyan out of the water. There she moves now to the transitioning yeah, area. Yeah, that's her through transition. So she'll get to the mount dismount line. Kiari from Kenya. And she'll be allowed to mount. And then she'll probably put... Uh, shoes on when she gets to the top so now the thing is again as we were saying she's got to get up this hill and we hope that she's uh, in a low in a light enough gear otherwise this becomes a very very tough to go up this hill um, and we'll see what she's able to do there these four in the front they are rotating beautifully there's no words between them no words needed because they realize that if they can stay out ahead if they can get a minute ahead um, then the four of them will have to uh, fight for the podium between those four athletes. Yes. Um, and um, yeah, so we'll have to see um, what happens because a few of them did race last week in uh, um, in South Africa, yeah. and um, so they'll know who's who's strongest in what, and they'll, they'll be able to know who has um, if there's any underlying injuries or any weaknesses that they can look at. We saw the tactics deployed. Uh between uh, Brankman and Rubbing. Yeah, and the ladies. the same playing out here? Yeah, so um, I think um, it's a little bit different in that I think the two of them realized that they were ahead of the rest, whereas, yeah, if one, of, uh, one or two of these ladies get a technical, then it's actually anybody's race in the group behind because we have a group of six behind that are also phenomenally strong and, for, and really able to, to go to the... Uh, to also be able to uh, run yes. and race... Yes. Uh, very well um, so these four are going to give it horns and try and stay out ahead and see what where we go from there in terms of distances swim it was a 750 meter swim and then they do a 20 kilometer ride and then they are going to do a five kilometer run just like the juniors did yes um, the, this is going to be four loops of five so we said this the race is pretty technical but a lot of these girls um, have raced in, um, in, in other areas where it's just as technical. So a lot of the ITU events are put, done on, um, like the last big one was done, the chap uh, championships were done on the, um, on the Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi uh, race course. So very yes. technical turns, not flat at all. And then it's, a lot of them are inner city. So what Swakopmund is able to offer is also inner city suburban race around, suburban race around many corners. You can see they have to avoid many of the uh, uh, um, uh, trees and the, uh, there's a lot of road furniture out there. So they need to be awake. They need to be very alert. Yes. This is them coming for their first loop of uh, five kilometers. So these ladies are five Ks in a quarter of the way in. Um, probably a K short. They're probably about four Ks in. Um, we'll see them come past our position here and then they'll be moving on and just taking a short loop at the bottom. There they are. 
and we have riders from the Netherlands, uh, South Africa, Slovakia, uh, Australia, uh, Ukraine, uh, also uh, Mauritius, Finland, Algeria and Kenya uh, fighting it out in this uh, section of the race. Yeah, so we'll see them uh, make that short, a high quality race. Lots of high quality athletes. We're going to see them make that short turn at the bottom here. You can see the lighthouse in the distance over there. They just make a very short. And here's the second group. The second group contains Vicky van der Merwe, as we just hear Paul Inkpen say out there on the course from uh, South Africa. Um, she's in that group, and there's a group of six. Also, very strong athletes, um, very strong uh, bikers, all of them. So they take part in a lot of uh, races in South Africa that are purely biking races. And um, that just shows you the, the absolute palmaris of these athletes and the depth of these athletes. So um, they've just turned the, the four ladies in the lead. And the other girls are definitely, the other four, other six ladies are definitely trying to uh, uh, try and get on their heels um, yes. as quickly as possible. I see the Netherlands also very well uh, represented here at our race. We've got Rachel, uh, Rachel K uh, Klammer, Barbara de Koning, uh, Marit van der Berg. Mm. So in the lead group, we have two of these Dutch ladies, Rachel Klammer and Barbara de Koning. I think the, the number no, rider number five or, or athlete number five, Rani Skrabanya, um, is also there. So, I mean, that would be uh, Netherlands one, two, three. Um, the Netherlands do come for training camps in Namibia, so that might be the reason why we have so many Dutch girls that are here um, they they definitely like using our um, our temperature and yes. our altitude um, and then our beauty of course so that's our Kenyan athlete that is um, that's just coming around that first bend at about three K's um, and she's still out there and um, we'll see what the if, if this race gets really hot and we get to the point where uh, where we end up uh, um, having to lap her, I think um, we'll have to find out. I missed that at the race briefing of whether they are going to pull her over. Yes. Uh, because uh, from a safety point of view, I don't think it's that important. But we'll see what the, what the race referees decide. Uh, but great to see so many athletes from so many different countries. And it's such a privilege for us here yeah, in South Africa, Namibia, Kenya to be racing against. European athletes that have raced in uh, world championships and have won world championships, uh, podiumed, and athletes that have uh, that have been competitive at Tokyo Olympics, uh, previous at Rio also. So it's great to see them. Um, as we see the male athletes also coming into transition and starting to go through uh, bike checks in the probably in the next hour or so. Uh, in terms of pace and uh, the standard being set here, are you satisfied? Yeah, I think it's very high. Uh, the, again, many ITU uh, points up for grabs. People definitely putting up their hands to race for their countries. So uh, that's the thing. Their, their own countries have to look far and wide to see them race wherever they are racing. Um, and that makes for a, a big change in, um, in the level of this event and in the prestige of our event here. So there's the leaders of the pack, as they say, the pace setters. So it does look like it's three Dutch girls, uh, three Dutch ladies and the, the one lady from Slovakia. So we'll see if that is so. I uh, just, I miss them coming through transition. So I just couldn't get down to their names. But great seeing them uh, race like this. Love the fact that they're all in the drops. So that's in the bottom. They just they mean business. They're there to race as hard as they can. Rachel Klammer at the back there. She came out of transition in first place. Um, not didn't enter in first, but has very smooth transition and is now out of transition. Uh, when she came out, she was in first. Also taking some fluid because you're probably gonna have more hydration issues here than they did in the in the junior race because it's really getting to be blisteringly hot out there, probably getting up to about 30 degrees really with the exposure that we have. Yeah. Another lap left. So 
I think that's their second or they're going to two and a half laps. Yes. Um, so very fast race. Notice how in the front there, there's a bit of attack around the corner from uh, from the Slovakian girl. So she's she, she just put in a bit of attack, but probably not intentionally, just by going around the corner smoothly and being in a, in a higher gear and then taking it from there. So the other girls be cooling off around the corner and then having to pull back onto. And that, that amount of power that you need to get to back on the wheel, that can also take it out of you for the run. But over such a short distance, most probably not. So we've seen Henri Krugel still riding strongly, uh, only a Namibian athlete. Riding strong. This is the second group, the second group of two, four, six. Yes. So we are bringing you the action live from Stockholm. It's the Africa Triathlon Cup, and it's happening right here at the Moorland Stockholm. This is the elite ladies doing their thing, and it is non-stop action. Uh, they finished uh, a swim, and they are now on the cycling stretch of this event, and then they will transition after four laps and they will start running for five kilometers. And uh, we are with them all the way and along the way. Uh, we would like to challenge uh, the locals to get out and to support uh, these uh, racers as we are also showcasing the beauty of Namibia, Swakop Munt in particular, to the rest of the world. Those of you who have joined us, uh, or those of you who want to spread the message, you can follow us live on DSTV channel 285 as well as Go TV channel 94. So this group is working together very nicely. Um, also a group of six that we saw earlier, they're still together. And you'll find that these girls will, um, these ladies are going to really rotate the whole time. With the strongest athletes probably taking a longer um, session um, in the front um, but every 20 to 40 seconds they will rotate and um, I can tell you that they are going at it may look because from this view you can't see it but you can see some of their elbows are bent they are really pulling on those handlebars they're really trying to get as much effort in as possible and it's uh, happening at a blistering pace yeah so they're really trying to get ahead <laughs> in front there you can see even see money Amons on the on his on the scooter electric scooter and uh, He's just staying just ahead of them. Um, so these girls are definitely going at a pace probably uh, 40 kilometers plus um, just to keep it there. And then it makes it very technical. You can even see that some places, because we are in a, a desert area, sand from the dunes yes. has pushed across the road. So yes. also important, you need to have both hands on the handlebars and look outside of your uh, turning circle because if you look into the circle, it could be devastation mm. for you so um, these girls uh, ladies pushing way ahead and they'll be coming past us now yeah for the third time so I think they're now finishing their third loop and you may even find that they're going to now lap um, the Kenyan athlete yes and we'll see what becomes of that so here we can see the route that's being used four laps uh, five kilometers to make up the 20 total road closure for which we are again very very grateful here in Namibia um, grateful in Swakop to be able to do this lots of races don't have that type of closure they only close one lane perhaps but for us to have that thank you very much to Swakop Moon to its constituency and to the people here uh, excellent stuff excellent stuff that second group of six should be going yeah, there's Vicky van der Merwe, a very strong uh, cyclist. Yes. Um, has got a lot of endurance. She's a South African. Um, she's, got, she's had a kid recently. Um, and uh, she's back on the racing circuit. So really amazing to see her out um, racing again, strong on the bike. So she's in that second group of ladies. 
and we'll see what the distance is between them and when they come around for their final lap now um, and just be able to see the body language as they come into transition. Yes. So we've got 5Ks left. So this group of four is really riding well and cohesively. It's really interesting to see that how they're getting ahead um, and how they are racing. So we're grateful for that. Um, that this isn't just a, another event on the calendar, but that they're actually giving it horns and, and going for it. It's great. Good to see that. As you see, the men come past us here. Yes. Many other men coming into the transition zone to go through equipment check yes indeed one so, Namibian competing in this race yeah yeah Henri Krugel we're very grateful that she's here um, representing Namibia and being able to do this we've just heard that there's 45 seconds between the front group of four and the next group of six yes um, so uh, that's that that's close and that can be made up if we really push on the last lap into yes. the last lap on the uh, uh, um, uh, starting to go onto the run. But what I've observed is uh, once you've established your lead in the cycling and uh, you maintain it, 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 it will be hard for you to get caught. But anything can happen. Anything can happen, specifically if there's uh, something technical that does happen. Um, I've seen races where the front group of four end up in a crash or yes. or end up taking a short corner and getting yes. a penalty. So, um, so that, you know, anything can happen. And that's why you race until the finish line. You've got to race until the finish line. It's very important. So, Henri Krugel coming past us here at the transition zone. And they, um, they try to forge ahead. So, Henri, really strong... Really strong cyclist for Namibia, as we said, um, trying to just eat back and claw back yes. um, on the what happened in the water and on the, in the transition. And um, many of the, the these athletes in the front, this front group of four, including the, the the group of six behind them, these are all athletes that have um, that do numerous international races. They know how to uh, transition. They know how to run out of uh, um, out of the water, um, and they've. It doesn't matter what the conditions are. And, yes. You know, you must applaud these athletes for tra traveling around the world, going to strange places, and then having to then uh, go and do their best uh, wherever they come, not knowing what's available there um, as regards food, as regards uh, uh, um, accommodation, and so on. So it's really good to see how, and we're very blessed to have this level of um, athlete here. I'm sure these athletes will go back and have a lot of good to say about Namibia. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's quite an acclaim for Namibia, the fact that the, the Dutch uh, triathlon team, and I know many of the Dutch and Belgian cyclists come to Winter, come to Swakopmund, and they come here and they want to, uh, they train here for four to six weeks because yes. of the, um, just, uh, we're, we're, we're safe. Yes. We're, cy we're cycling flare friendly. We are tourist friendly. And... We've got phenomenally serviced roads, um, even if they are um, not tar roads and they gravel roads or they're the salt roads, um, they really enjoy them. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we see them out uh, training and you can get to train alongside them, which makes a big difference um, to us as, uh, you know, as, as age group athletes. Yes, yes. I've also observed that uh, w once they take the corner, they, they tend to stand up a little bit, push harder. Yeah, so what you want to do is, um, in the corner itself, you're going to be seated because yes. uh, you want to take the corner as smoothly as possible with as little braking as possible so that you don't have to then get into a, a heavier or a lighter gear. But then what you find that the athletes do is they stand out of the corners uh, once they've come around just because um, your power is all in your core when you're sitting there like that uh, and with your hands on the drops. And then when they get to a significant corner and they're turning left, they're turning right, they want to just stand for a few seconds or for two seconds just to get some blood into the other muscles and to be able to stretch those hamstrings, which they're going to be using and firing now at, mm -hmm. uh, at the, uh, um, on the run. So these ladies are already thinking about what they're going to do on the run. There's three Dutch ladies, one Slovakian lady in the front, um, and they're trying to go at it. 
Um, and we'll see what they do with Romania, Gajozova, or um, with these three uh, Dutch girls, Barbara, Rachel, and Rani, um, riding together and riding very seamlessly, smoothly, as you can see. They're just coming past the dome on their left there, um, um, Hotel and Convention Center, one of our, uh, our sponsors here. And uh, yeah, it's a move along. They got total road closure. Yes. Those roads have also been clean for the event, which is absolutely amazing. So we'll see what's happening. They can also see the other athletes come alongside them there. Very, very unique uh, route uh, laid out here by uh, the community of Swakopmund and uh, the triathlon community. It is scenic because we know Swakopmund is indeed a scenic <laughs> town enjoyed by tourists from wide and far so here we are uh, enjoying a triathlon with athletes from all over the world competing at the highest level of this uh, triathlon competition and this serves good for Namibians I'm surely there's a lot of youngsters out there watching this uh, being present physically along the route and seeing this happening so if I want to start doing triathlon, where do I go to? On which doors do I knock? You just have to get off your couch. That's the first move. I think many people aren't getting off their couches um, and saying, what do I do, what do I do? And I think the first thing is get out there and start walking. You can't run until you're able to walk and you can't cycle <laughs> if you're not getting out there on the bike. So don't go in think that you've been intimidated by very expensive equipment and to see all the tech that's involved just get off your couch and start running start walking that's yes, how you get yes, out there this yes. group of four really putting the pace down now so there you have it all you need to do is start you really need to start somewhere in anything you want to get done it's important that you start but uh, back to the action we are bringing you uh, the women's elite race uh, they are now busy with the cycling part of this triathlon cup happening in Swakop Munt. Uh, the sun is out the heat is speaking out uh, the branches are rustling and uh, the ladies are cycling very hard they will be moving over uh, to the transition area after this lap where they will get rid of the bikes and then take uh, to the jogging stretch which is another five kilometer stretch uh, of this prestigious competition so as uh, we've learned earlier we have uh, the Dutch riders Rachel Klammer, Barbara de Koenang and uh, Rania Skrab Banya as well uh, they are being joined by Romana Kajasova uh, from Slovakia and uh, these four riders female riders they are leading the pack and they've opened a, a gap some sort of a gap and it would be interesting to see what transpire in uh, the jogging or the running section of this race yeah, so they will um, definitely not be jogging. <laughs> jogging is probably what you and I do yes. compared to them. They'll be coming in at um, um, at about three minutes per kilometer or just over. Um, and especially with this leading group of Dutch um, ladies, they are really going to put some um, hammer down. And you'll see there'll be a, we're going to have incredible racing between the four of them on the four loops of 1.25 to make up the five kilometer run leg of a sprint triathlon so let's see what they do coming around here now the group of um, six athletes behind them is still at about 45 plus seconds behind them and we'll see what happens with um, with those six athletes um, so how you come out of the water is so important because and how you transition because if you miss that gap with the then we find that the four athletes become can, can quickly get away yes, from them yes time time is of the essence here it's all about time it's all about position and it's all about getting it right there is no room for mistakes because mistakes will cost you dearly and mistakes will cost you time 
and you yeah. do not want to lose time because oh, you, you want to be up front there you want to be the best that you can be and this is what triathlon brings uh, it brings out a number of aspects a number of qualities each of these competitors must adhere to it actually takes a lot from a competitor to be a triathlete yeah, so we have to manage um, the three disciplines, uh, swim, bike, run. And then also on top of that, nutrition seems to be so important as well as your ability to travel. So there's many athletes that can race at home phenomenally well in their region, in their hometown, in their country, but they cannot race, inter they struggle to race internationally because they don't travel well. And there's a notorious cases of different athletes that that, that has happened to. So. Uh, the fact that these athletes, especially with the ITU series that happens around the world, every few weeks you're in a different country or continent, means that you have to have an ab amazing ability to, to adjust to uh, conditions and also to, to cultures, shops, uh, customs, um, all of that, um, and then flying around everywhere. So again, these four ladies in the, in the lead and really putting down the hammer, really going at it. Um, and that is so awesome. It's such a, a testament to triathlon around the world and what triathlon has become, but also to Namibia because you wouldn't have had this level and this class of athlete if we didn't have the conditions or the logistics that we have or the sponsorship that we have now. So that's very uh, amazing for us and we're grateful to have this. These four athletes now still rotating beautifully. You can actually see the sun beating down on the backs of those uh, Dutch girls that were their open back uh, tri suits. And one girl from Slovakia, the one lady. And uh, she's going to have to see what her tactics are because the, the Dutch can work together. Also, the Dutch can, can, can speak amongst each other. They understand each other's body languages. And they have trained together. I don't know if she does train with them. We often find that different nationalities train together depending on uh, sponsors and sponsorships and uh, alliances that have been formed. So we'll have to see where that goes. So these are the four athletes straight behind them. They'll be able to see the other athletes. You'll see how they wrote, go round and now they will stand because yes. that gear yes. that they are in is, is reasonably heavy gear and they just want to get off the front. This is the second uh, Africa Triathlon Cup being hosted. So this is the second time this is being hosted, yeah. And uh, what is great, what I'm grateful for, is that it's happening, um, and that we're growing from event to event. So the field of international athletes, we up to 22 different countries that have come. We were going to have 23 countries, so that's amazing. And then also the the caliber of athlete that we have here is phenomenal. Back to the ladies, and we have uh, competitors from all over, as we indicated. This is the elite woman, and we have uh, cyclists from Algeria, Denmark, Finland, Guam, uh, Kenya, Mauritius, Namibia's very own Andre Krugel battling the out there on She's the track. The and then we have athletes from She's the Netherlands, the uh, four athletes from the Netherlands, and three of them are actually now in the lead, and they are setting the pace. We've got one Ukraine athlete, one from Austria, five athletes from South Africa and one athlete from Slovakia that's Romana Gatsasova and she's battling out with the ladies uh, from the Netherlands Rachel Klammer, uh, Barbara de Koning and uh, Rani Skrabanya yes. that's it, that's it yeah so it's interesting to see the this group that's a group of six that's just behind them and you can see the dome in the distance on the left there probably about 500 meters so the distance between them is maybe 500 to a kilometer and as they come around this bend they possibly can just catch the end of them coming around the side our beautiful drone footage showing you what's happening in this group of six they are still sticking, sticking together all of them on the drop so this is not a, a group that is lollygaggling they are moving along at speed you can see them come past there but it's possibly that the other girls have extended the lead from 45 seconds to over a minute um, and they would be able to do that because they would have been able to see them when they came down we can see 
Here's one of the athletes coming past that is riding on her own. Oh, no, no, it's a group of three. Now, that's very good. If the groups form like that, yes. it really saves you a lot of energy so that you can actually use the rest of your energy out on the bike. And uh, so as they also turn, the direction of the wind will turn, and that will also play an, an influence. And you'll see probably the stronger riders doing about 40 plus seconds on the front and then the other girls are rotating through at 20 something seconds um, just just staying in the same cadence staying in that same power zone so we can they can get ahead but I'm sure now in their minds they're going to be thinking about how do we make this a Netherlands one two and three um, and is um, are we going to find that Romana is actually going to throw a cat amongst the pigeons and yes. split up that group and actually break up that podium? So these girls will be thinking and talking and looking at each other, also listening to the breathing of the other person, seeing how much they're drinking. You'll see these girls probably only have one bottle on their bike because it's 20 kilometers. They're not going to be doing hours and hours on the bike, so they're yes. not going to be taking in that much nutrition. And you'll see this run will be a complete anaerobic run. Um, so that the five kilometers is done in <clears throat> between 15 and uh, 20 minutes. Um, also, quite a technical run, so you can't just keep running. You have to almost break and come around the corner, as we see on the Dio Farmer corner. They go around that corner. But it is getting a, a lot hotter. And uh, I think this is their last loop. Yes. They'll come through there, and they're going to go all the way down. Now, we haven't seen this side of the race from above. And this goes down towards the historical lighthouse here and to our old transition area, which you can see on the, on the right-hand side there. And just ahead, the road is closed. That's a thoroughfare, and it's closed, and the, the ladies turn there. And you'll see now, they go up the section next to the market, and they go past these beautiful old historic uh, buildings and hotel, um, Namibian German culture from yesteryear yes. and now they come all the way down we haven't been seeing this part of the race and it's it's really interesting to be able to see it be able to see the loop that they do they come back around there and they come back towards us here from the lighthouse now we can see one of the Dutch girls has actually dropped off the back yes so suddenly we have our podium with two Dutch girls and one Slovakian girl and then they are, and this is a bit of an incline, it's a false flat, you don't realize it, but they actually are going up a false flat. Now they can see these six other girls that are coming around. They yes. are coming into the transition zone. And in the front is the Slovakian Romania, and you can see how she comes in here. She's got her feet out of there, and she's going to jump off the bike, have a seamless, that's the mount dismount line. Boom, they're off. We have about a 1.8. Uh, one minute, point eight, eight second, second uh, uh, gap between the two groups. The first groups, uh, the first riders who have just arrived. And I think Skrabania is actually standing her own. Eh? She's holding up quite well. Catches over from Roma from Slovakia. Is oh, the one yeah. that's um, that's now throwing the cat amongst me. She's the first one out. Now we can see here come the other girls. They're straight behind. They're coming right past us here. So Rachel Klamer, along with the two other Dutch girls, all running beautifully together. Rani Skrabanya and Barbara de Quilling, they come out and they make that hill look like a flat. Quite a good So she stride. was first out of the water and now she's doing, she's leading in the run. So she's, she's almost in a position where she's going to have to play mind games with them. Here we have Vicky van der Merwe coming out into transition. Followed by the rest of the f uh, five other riders, another one from South Africa. We have three from South Africa. Um, and they're coming around and they're going to be setting up. These girls are going to try and see if the group in front are going to break themselves and just break up the group, break yes. the elastic, and be able to take one, two, three, and four. And maybe these girls can also come into those positions. But remember, every place that you place is another ITU point. So yes. these girls are racing for points to be able to put their hands up for their country, to be able to put their hands up and say, I'm, I want to be counted, I want to go to 
um, to the Olympics. I want to be at um, the next Commonwealth Games. I want to be part of the team. So that's what we're going to find happening here. So these girls are out. So there goes Bridget Tennyson on the front. And then uh, we have the two other girls followed by the, the last of South Africa's Vicky, Vicky van der Merwe. So we know uh, Katsova was out up front with uh, Kalmer and the Koenig following closely on her heels. So we'll have to see what these girl, what these ladies are doing. They're getting to the Dio Farmer turn point. And we can see in the front now there's one Dutch girl along with Romania uh, from Slovakia. They're sitting in the front. And they're just keeping, they're just tapping it over. You can see she's in a nice rhythm. And then be, behind them, we have Rachel Klama. Another Dutch girl, beautiful dismount off the bike. She's going to come around seamlessly, load, put her bike up, get her shoes on, and then take off her helmet. Remember, they've got to drop everything they have from the bike. They've got to put it back into the container. It's got to be sitting right there in your container. And then everything must be placed neatly and she's out. So seamless, absolutely seamless. But in seconds. But, but quite far off the pace. So remember every position, why do you keep running even if you're not going to finish on the podium? Because you, you're here to get points for ITU. So again, here we have this, the, the Dutch girl in front. I think it's Barbara. We'll see when they come past us here now. Along with Romania, Gajazova, and we'll see what uh, what is. Now, they've opened up a substantial lead. We're just going to see they're coming back from the Deer Farmer turn, and they're coming back towards us here, and they are really great pace. You can see it'll be pheno it's a phenomenal pace, and I promise you it's, it's, it's staying on them with a mountain bike. You have to know what you're doing to stay with them. Also, quite a technical course, so not straight. Along the beach boulevard, yeah, a beautiful swak of moon. We can see here they come. The number, the number of loops. They'll be doing four loops of 1.25 kilometers for the 5k. As we have girls and ladies still coming in. Here's uh, Fisher coming in. They're getting off their bikes. They have to get off before the dismount line. Coming round. Transitioning, there we see the girls go through. So already we have the two ladies ahead that are now vying for first place. So we have Romania Kajozova from Slovakia in the front. We are into the second lap now. Here we go. So Barbara de Quilling. So Barbara de Quilling, and then then comes Rachel Klama. So you can feel the tension. Quite significant tension now. Yeah, there's a lot of tension, and here we see Andre Kriegel come in off the bike. So she has made up quite a bit of time. Unfortunately, she wasn't in the group of uh, six or the group of three. She had to ride out there on her own. And that's how important the swim and the first transition is out onto the bike. How much off? She's also a great runner. Let's hope and see how much uh, she can make up with a run. Maybe catch up with uh, some of the other competitors. So again, we're run. looking for points. We're looking for points and she's out there. She's just pressed the watch. And great pace. And she's got a good... Well supported there, the Namibian, by the spectators. So Vicky van der Merwe, them coming around here for their, for their, going on to their second lap, whereas Andre Kriegel's going on on the first. Um, and then the lead, ladies in the lead, Romania catches over, quietly just sitting there on the feet of Barbara de Quinn, and the two of them are in a nice rhythm. And they're just going to keep it going. Also, again, as we've said, this is quite a technical course. Lots of road furniture. And we're finding it's only in sections like this that they can actually run openly. Yes. And um, then they're able to 
gauge where the other person is. They're able to listen to the breathing of the other person as well as the cadence of their feet. And the two of them will definitely not just be running. They'll be thinking through what's going to go, what's happening now. Do I make a surge? Is she still on my feet? Is she not? How far back are the other girls? How far back are the other ladies? So, amazing. We see there, amazing. Romania taking a water. So, um, so there's quite the, a lot happening amongst the athletes as yeah, they are doing this. All the time, because you are racing for a position, you're not racing for a time. So, if, you, if everybody else behind you is walking and you walk faster, you get first place. So the aim here is to, 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 is, to, is to race your competitors and race the conditions, not race a specific time. Um, and, th and that's important. And you find that the, the races that, can, that are able to do that the, the best are usually the ones that can compete over multiple uh, um, events, over multiple venues. So she's just got a little bit of a gap there, Barbara de Quilling. She's just opening it up and she's keeping... And she'll just keep her... But I'm sure Romania is just sitting there, um, listening, and, and, and being able to see, to judge her from behind, read her body language, whereas Barbara is having to look um, at the shadow that's next to her um, and to see what's happening. Because as the sun comes round, she'll be so able to see. So it's a cat and mouse game. Totally cat and mouse. These two, girl, two ladies, first and second, uh, they'll be coming through transition. In the next few uh, seconds, here yeah, they come. They're going to be coming past us now. This is the end of their second lap. They've got two more to go. And they're doing this at quite a pace. Yeah. So that is uh, well over, well under four kilometer, uh, four minutes per kilometer. And here they come. The ladies in the lead. So because the course is such a um, a small loop. 1.25 they're going to be racing past other athletes that are a, a loop down on them or possibly even two loops down on them yeah these are the two ladies in the lead so there now suddenly we see that uh, Romania cut us over from Slovakia this the gap has just opened up and when Barbara sees that, Barbara the Quillen, as soon as she realizes she's broken that elastic, that'll really give her a bit of power. It'll give her a bit of impetus and a bit of uh, momentum to start pushing. So, um, yeah, on the straight there, you can see suddenly her cadence has picked up. And she's going a lot faster. So the action is coming to us non-stop here with the runners now doing their thing. These are the elite runners from countries such as Algeria, Denmark, Finland, Guam, Kenya, Mauritius, Namibia, Netherlands, Ukraine, Austria, South Africa and Slovakia. And uh, we know that Barbara de Koenig from the Netherlands is setting the pace here. Yeah. So she's in the first place, second place. We, 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 we haven't had eyes on um, Rani Skrabanya or on Rachel Klamer to be able to see what they are doing right now. Uh, here comes Henri Krugel, Namibian athlete. And then this, this was the second group of six. Yes. So you see that's broken up into a group of three that are running, that are running together. And then uh, we'll see where the others come through. Andre Kriegel through for a first lap. Oh, but Barbara the Quinnen. What a easy cadence, what a rhythm. You can see she's in the straight. She she's moving her shoulders beautifully from side to side. That's her running style. Yes. It's really good to see that. Another South African runner coming through. I think she was in the second group, um, I, if I'm not mistaken. So they've broken up into the group of six cyclists. Has broken up, and we'll see what happens with them um, as each lap is run. But it's we, as if she's getting better as the race is going. Yeah. So that that tends to happen. Um, 
especially if um, you can if you can uh, find that you you uh, you've broken the other athlete that's with you or that the other athlete is not able to stick with you especially if you put the pace up yes so we'll see what happens but um ronnie scrabania and rachel Klamer, we want to be able to see what um where they because that's a fight for third That's our lady in first coming along the boulevard. She's on a third lap now. Final so she's, lap. Yeah. Final lap. She's going to see how far she's ahead. And then once that happens, um, especially if she's got uh, teammates out on the course that are able to tell her that she's this far ahead, then she can just simply make she can simply maintain what she's doing instead of racing ahead. So we see what happens when she comes around now. Her form looks phenomenal. I don't think she's got any issues uh, right now. I know that one or two of the Dutch team have been struggling with injuries, but look at the flow with which she's running there. Barbara doing really well in second place. Romania looks like she is struggling. That's what we're hearing. Uh, she looks tired, but we'll see how that how that plays out because she only needs to still stay on for 1.25 to 1.5 kilometers. Okay, so now we've had another runner, the Dutch runner. I wonder if that is another Dutch runner that's come past uh, Romania Kajazova. So let's see what happens uh, as they come past us here, uh, and we'll see what's going to happen. And here we see also the Kenyan athlete coming in now. Okay, so Rachel Klama is in second. So having a hamstring injury, she still pulled back. She shouldered on, soldiered on, and we see that it's Rachel Klama. Yeah, so Klama's in second, um, and she's pulled her head. And then Skrabanya is in fourth, but she's made up quite a bit of time on this group. So it seems like Rachel Klama has pulled away from Rani Skrabanya and um, has, has gone ahead of Romania Kajazova. So we'll see what's happening, but I'll look at the action. Um, so Otis, can you see how that rhythm is there? Yeah, with that, the with soldiers, yes, the yeah, swinging. beautiful. So Barbara de Quilling is really pulling it out, and she's now in her rhythm, where she's not running faster than she's used to, yes. or slower than she's used to. She's just in a steady run pace. Probably, probably race pace. This is definitely really a race pace, because she doesn't want to now uh, uh, be caught from behind. Yes. But she's going to run and she's going to just keep it at that pace. You can see she's very comfortable because she realizes she's probably got 30 seconds to a minute, which the other ladies will not make up over the next kilometer. Hey, Kenyan man. athlete getting applause as she goes up the hill here for the first time. Yes. We'll see what happens there. I'm, I'm inclined to say that the Kwanang really kept the cool. From she the did. beginning. She did. So the Quilling has done really well. We're going to see her coming up now towards the Deal Farmer turn. And see what happens with that. She's coming up to that Deal Farmer point. Um, and then she's probably got about 750 meters before she comes past. Home stretch. Yeah. So the ladies that were in that second group of six, yes, three of them. They're running together. They're doing phenomenally well. The crowds are getting bigger. Um, so lots of people are out there and they're shouting for them. They're going around for their second lap now, going into their third. Whereas Barbara the Quilling has really risen to the top. Yes. There we see her coming around the deer farmer. And now she's going to come along that boulevard. The beautiful boulevard. You can see the breeze is now in her face and she will actually enjoy that. And she might even take two seconds to enjoy the fact that she's running beautiful Africa, beautiful Namibia, beautiful Swakopmund. That she's having an awesome time running here. Yes. Um, yes. And what a privilege for us to see athletes like this racing. And what a privilege for us to um, have athletes like this to race against and to aspire to. So, yeah, this is a really uh, plus point for Namibia. And um, I think this will really create some momentum just for sport in general for Namibia, and I'm grateful for that. So as she comes in, she's probably got about four, three, four, three, four hundred meters, 
as she comes in to the final lap and everybody else is still out there yeah they still they still having to do their required laps and remember everybody's here for points everybody's here to get some form of itu points which will then bring them round to um to getting a place at the olympics or yes. onto their national squad yes. so it looks like the ladies from the netherlands came with a definite plan yeah the the the, the dutch girls have really uh, pulled together well and we want to see if they can really pull off that one two three oh she dares to look around and now she's able to just realize I've got this nobody else is going to catch me and she comes in to take the win here we go here we go brilliant stuff here brilliant stuff there you have Barbara the corner taking the win so Barbara the Quillen taking it and look how Klamer has come back Rachel Klamer with an injury has managed to come all the way through and take second and then from Slovakia Romania Gajazova manages to hold on for that third really throwing a cat amongst the pigeons the Dutch girl in fourth Rani Skrabanya really tried couldn't but made it back there and that's just phenomenally phenomenally good just outside all three all four of them and race so well together all of them you can see Rachel Klamer just yeah, just reaching for the side there yes. struggling with that injury and run straight through it so nobody should tell me that triathletes are not tough they are of the toughest breed in the world they she take a through. massive amount of um, uh, they take a massive amount of pain a massive amount of anaerobic capacity to get there but here they are what a phenomenal race these ladies all getting beautiful points but Barbara de Quillen having uh, uh, featured last week and done so well she's on form at the moment she's the informed person she's the one that uh, probably had the target on her back for today yes. and uh, it's good to see that uh, what we had predicted or what was predicted uh, did come to pass as uh, more of the runners come past I see a Fisher from South Africa coming through transition going all the way through oh and Namibian lady is still out there our Namibian lady is looking strong not the best swim that she had and that probably put her on the back foot for her even though she had a very strong bike so, it's so the three ladies that just came in yes it's a one uh, and a two for the Netherlands third position to Slovakia and then uh, Rani Skrabanya from the Netherlands finishing in number four. Yep. And now the girls seem to be coming in fast. There's this group of six that had broken up. So we had those three girls, the three ladies in front that came through. And now the, we have the rest of the, that group of six coming in. Um, yo, and it's been some phenomenal racing. Our we Kenyan see lady. a Kenyan lady coming around for a first lap or a second lap, might be a first. And there is Andri Krugel. I think she's got one more lap. Let's see what happens when she comes around. So hosting a successful event. What does it bring to the stature of Namibia on the international scene? Well, I think we've put our hands up for international events that are, that are multi-sport, firstly, and secondly, that are multinational or international. So we're not only able to host something for a SADC area or for a regional area, we're able to host something that has got many countries from different continents here, and a multi-sport event so we can host something that has got both sea yes sand and our roads and uh, we're so grateful again for the road closures that we have yes. because that makes such a big difference to the safety and for the viewing pleasure of the event and it's good that uh, our municipality is willing to to come to the party it's very important that our municipality is uh, uh, did come to the party because it meant that we don't have to worry about um specifically 
about the safety of the athletes out there, specifically the international athletes. And I know, you know, with many areas of the world being um, war-torn or being areas that culturally wouldn't allow a race like this, we're very grateful that we are able to, to host an uh, event like this. And I think we've definitely put our hands up to yes. say, hey, yes. what are we going to do next? Now we are, we are gunning for the final stretch of this competition and uh, it will be the elite men and uh, in that category we have Algeria, Barbados, Belgium, Bermuda, Britain, Denmark, Egypt, Ireland, Japan, Kazakhstan, Morocco, Mauritius, Mexico, Netherlands, Aust Austria, Spain, South Africa and Togo in action. Yeah, so that's uh, again a very exciting lineup. I know many of these did race last week. Um, in uh, in South Africa at the African Champs. So let's see what what, uh, what that holds. Um, I know one or two athletes have had to pull out due to sickness and to injury. So we'll see if that affects them. Best part. Media, uh, um, she's the first time. No, I have. Well, it's my first time here in Sokomont, but I've been training in Bintuk for a couple of years now. So I'm actually, I was there like about four weeks ago, and I'm actually going back now. Tomorrow we're gonna go and train there for another three, four weeks. We really like it. Okay, well, congratulations. But before you, before we leave and leave you, how is the route for you? The route. Yeah, it was really nice. I love swimming in the sea. It's really nice. Um, when we're training in the sea, I'm always a little bit scared of dolphins and sharks and stuff, but now it is amazing. And then nice to have a couple of uh, loops on the run, so there's a lot of people and you can see the spectators all, so I really enjoyed it. Congratulations, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, well, we're still going to catch up with the winner of this competition and we will get back to you shortly as soon as we have a hold of them. Yes, there you have it, uh, viewers. That was the winner of the elite ladies. So yeah, that was the race. That was uh, Rachel Klammer there. Yes. Um, and she came in in second there with Barbara De Quinnen coming in first, the uh, on-form okay. person. But Rachel Klammer soldiered ahead and uh, got a great second uh, place um, ahead of Romania Gajazova uh, from Slovakia who came in third and really threw a cat amongst the pigeons there uh, because Rani Skrabania, also from the representative in the, the Netherlands, the four of them were in a group together. Yes. And uh, we, we, we were wondering what was going to happen when the, when the three of them or the four of them got on, off the bike. So they had biked very nicely together. Um, but Barbara, being the, the in-form athlete at the moment, was the one that uh, managed to pull away on the second lap and then that uh, elastic had broken between her and uh, Romania. So then she just carried on from there. Good stuff then from Barbara de Koenung all the way from the Netherlands. And uh, her uh, uh, teammate, I nearly said, yeah, uh, Klammer, finishing in second, also from the Netherlands. Uh, Romana Gajasova throwing a spanner in the works there of uh, the ladies from the Netherlands breaking up that monopoly there finishing in third and then joined by Rani Skrabanya who finished in fourth so there we heard now from uh, Paul Ingpen out on the uh, course at uh, the finish line and at the um, next to the transition zone that Henri Krugel just finished the Namibian. Very proud of her. After not having the best swim, she had a phenomenal, um, she had a phenomenal bike and a really good uh, run and she even finished with a sprint. So uh, yeah, points to her, kudos to her also. And let's see what, uh, what the future holds with that. But great for Namibia, great yes, for Namibia. Yes.
so we can see that the the ladies from the Netherlands actually ganged up against uh, uh, Kajasova. Yeah, so there I think there were other Dutch girls that have, that have finished or are still finishing. So you'll find that um, that because they they know each other and they train together. Also, uh, a lot of the Netherlands, uh, the Dutch team, having doing a bit of a training camp here in Namibia. They get uh, they get better used to the conditions we have here. Yes. Um, they can also pre-ride the course weeks before the time, um, and that does make a difference in the long run to your race. So uh, again, kudos to everybody. Very well done, and I'm uh, yeah, we're excited to see what's going to happen in the yes. men's race. Yeah, as we go to the replay. We can see Barbara de Quinning, beautiful run, just taking it easy, nice rhythm, going along. We had Romania Kajas over on her tail, but uh, had to, um, but eventually that elastic snapped. And you can see how easily she just takes it along the boulevard there, comes in for the win. The on form Barbara de Quilling from the Netherlands taking it after doing phenomenally well last week in first and just behind her Rachel Klamer you can see running in a in a very in an uncomfortable gait because of an injury. The only Namibian women to take part in the elite women category. I think we saw the toughness, the intensity in the elite women category. Quick me run run me through it. How was it for you from the get-go? Oh, it was a lot tougher than I expected, to be honest. Um, these professionals can really swim, so I had a tough time catching up after the swim. And then cycling on my own, it's always a bit tough if you cycle against people in the wind. Um, so I did my best there and then just gave it all on the run. So it's it a good and tough one. Well, love to see you finishing at the end. But when we spoke earlier, yesterday, you said you have to be tough. You have to have guts to take part with uh, people of this caliber. And you stood up. You went through it, you went all the way to the end. Quickly run me through, how does it feel to compete against the best actually? It feels really good. Um, what one must remember is that it takes a lot of preparation to do something like this. Even though it's very short, it's months and months of prep. I didn't have the prep that they probably had. They're all professionals. I'm working, so it's a little bit difficult. But I think I did pretty well for where I am in my fitness. Okay, last question. Out of the three, we spoke about this yesterday. Where did you feel you did good and where did you feel you had to like push Harder than you were doing? Surprisingly, the run was the best for me today, although it's my weakest one. Uh, the cycle surprised me. I didn't have the legs today, so I was a bit disappointed in my cycle today. Okay, well, congratulations for doing well and for finishing there. Thank you very much. Well, we still have a few more interviews coming your way. The girl from, uh, I'm, not, I'm not perfectly sure of the name, but we will catch up with that now, now. This How happening. are you? And <laughs> Tired, but good, very good. Quickly, run me through. How was the race? Um, it was very fun and technical, and the girls were just very strong, and I learned a lot today. Okay, let's talk about the route. Last question. How was the route for you? The what? The, the route. Yeah. The route. Yeah. Oh, the route. Technical, very tough. <laughs> yeah, but very fun. Um, you're always like concentrating, and your mind doesn't wander, so it was really fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it from the girl. It was fun. She enjoyed it. But we still have more interviews coming your way. Austria. 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 This Austria. Austria. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going for an ad break. And then we might resume and bring you the action from the elite men uh, section of this competition. I'm going to tell you a bit about helping somebody with seizures. So what's the first thing we do? We make sure that the area around them is clear of any objects so that they don't injure themselves. Never put a spoon, a stick or any other object into the patient's mouth. 
When and if possible, make sure you turn the patient left lateral so they don't aspirate when any vomiters or the tongue does not fall back. Make sure you call Imed Rescue at 924 for any medical emergency. Here are some tips and precautions to take at home for the elderly and the young. Always try to keep calm, stay calm and keep the patient calm in case of a injury. Always keep a well-stocked first aid kit where you can locate it quickly, check it for expiration date and should you suspect poisoning or overdose, call EMED Rescue at 924. Well, we are joined by Oli Turner, all the way from Great Britain. Oli, just tell me how you're feeling today. Yeah, so uh, pretty good. Done some uh, prep stuff today um, here in sunny Swakopmund. A um, little different weather to the UK right now, but um, yeah, looking forward to racing. Body's feeling good and excited. Okay, first time, first time in Namibia. Yeah. You've been in Africa before, but you were in Morocco. Yeah, yeah. So compared to that, how is Namibia for you? Completely different. Um, <laughs> I was in um, Dakla, which is... Uh, like Western Sahara, uh -huh. so similar kind of um, place, I guess, with the mm -hmm. desert. Um, but I guess di I didn't, I didn't really expect landing in Welvis Bay to, yeah, drive 35 minutes down the road and uh, like the town to look like this. Yeah, uh, it was amazing. So yeah, it's it's awesome. I love okay. it. Yeah. Let's talk about preparations for the triathlon. Yeah. How have you been getting ready? How have you been keeping in shape, making sure that your mind is in the right state and your body is in the right state? So we raced last weekend in Port Elizabeth, so it's kind of like a, I guess almost like a warm up. Uh -huh. um, it was an Olympic distance, so half the distance of this weekend. Sprint distance is always brutal, it's like uh -huh. one hour, <laughs> pretty much max effort, like rip the heart and lungs out. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, we've had a good winter, um, had a decent camp in Portugal, so we have uh -huh. done a little bit of heat training, I guess, as such. Um, and obviously was in South Africa last weekend, um, and yeah, I think that the, the, the shape's definitely in a good place. So, looking forward to uh, towing the line tomorrow. Well, we are joined by Matthew Wright, all the way from Barbados. Uh, Matthew, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm good to be here. Okay, so first time in Africa, first time in Namibia. Run me right. through it. Um, how has it been? How's the experience? How are you feeling being here? Yeah, no, it's been amazing, man. Honestly, the, the place has blown me away. Like, as I said, I was in South Africa last weekend racing and maybe again this weekend, and it's, uh -huh. just, it's just gorgeous. And it's been, I don't know what I expected, but it's definitely going to be all my expectations. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I didn't, didn't have the race I wanted last weekend, so I'm here to hopefully kind of rectify that and uh -huh. I have, you know, fire in my belly to, to race hard tomorrow and hopefully be on the podium. Okay, you know, uh, the fire is going to drive you a long way, but, you know, 22 nationals, 22 countries are here to compete. Uh, and how do you feel about that? Yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, gone were the days when, you know, you used to come come to these smaller races and, you you know, it'd be a bit easier, you know. Uh -huh. But nowadays, like, some really, really highly ranked world, uh, you uh -huh. know, world ranked athletes are here racing. So it's going to be hard. It's going to be fast. It's going to be tough to, to get on the podium. So you're going to need to have, you know, every every ounce of your energy to, to get over there first. Okay, we are joined by Thomas all the way from Belgium. Thomas, quickly tell me, your first time here, how does it feel being in Namibia? Uh, so, um, it's quite uh, quite crazy, actually, uh -huh. to be that far away from uh, Europe. Uh -huh. uh, it's a beautiful city. Uh -huh. Didn't expect it from Namibia and, uh -huh. like, beautiful landscapes around, so... Okay, let's talk about the cup. Let's talk about preparations. How have you been preparing for this and how have you been getting ready, keeping fit and making sure that you're in the right mind space for the African uh, Triathlon Cup? Uh, so yeah, we, it's like the second race of the season. The first race was last week in uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we came here to try to do some... Uh
years viewers we are uh, still waiting for the woman participants in the elite race to finish up and then uh, the transition area will be cleared out totally completely and uh, then we will come to the elite male section of this race and here we have uh, 36 athletes from Netherlands, Japan, Kazakhstan, Denmark, Ireland, Mauritius, Barbados, Mexico, South Africa, all over. It's happening here in Swakopmund. Uh, it's going to be a tight competition as we just witnessed in the ladies section where we had uh, Barbara de Ponang being crowned uh, champion Hij is een radio omroeper. Een sport omroeper. Als het er. Dat is een lekkere start. Dank u. So the athletes are being introduced one by one. We have uh, Richard Murray. Uh, we have uh, Chenta Uchida, Uchida from Japan. Emil Holm from Denmark. Yeah, so we have quite a few of the athletes that uh, raced um, at the African Champs last uh, week in the elite yes. males. Uh, so we have 36 athletes uh, taking part. I think uh, one or two may have withdrawn since yesterday or this morning based on, um, on um, our, our last reports of illness. Uh, but we'll see what happens in this field. Um, as each athlete is being introduced and it's amazing how all the age groupers of earlier today we can see many of them standing around they are now Definitely. there watching their heroes watching their friends watching the, their countrymen coming out we unfortunately do not have any Namibians in this field but we do have quite a few um, South Africans that are taking part and we'll see what what happens um, when the South Africans party. Richard Murray was historically South African. He has taken on the um, nationality of his wife, Rachel Klamer. Uh -huh. So um, now flying the flag of Netherlands. So we'll see what happens in the field. Um, and also um, we'll see, you know, what has happened since last week where many of these men did race. And um, I see Paul Inkpen is introducing them now um, as they come past each of them. And we can see the temperatures have also changed, so it's much warmer now. Yes. They won't want to be as long out of the water because um, they're already wet. Uh, they've been in. They've, they've gone in for a recce swim, um, and now they are just standing there. Now they're going to have to hold on to that pole. That's part of the ruling. And once they, we can see there are technical officers in blue and in white, and uh, they'll be holding on to those, the pole and then be sprinting into the water. And then you'll see those lines formed as we did, as we saw in the women's uh, race. Yes. The men's race, you'll see there's quite a bit of jostling um, as everybody tries to get the straightest line to get to the first boy. Remember, they're going to be taking uh, a loop of 375 meters. This is a 750 meter course um, on the swim, it's a triangular course in this beautiful uh, Muela Bay. Um, 
which is uh, here in Swakopmund, right in front of that Strand Hotel. Um, and um, yeah, so as the athletes come onto the front, they'll, they'll, they'll run into the water and then you'll see they will try and head for, and fight for that best position as fast as they can to get into a straight line towards that first boy and then we'll take it from we'll take it from there yes so so any any known names here in 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 our group so there's quite a few of them that actually raced um last week and we'll i um i struggle to see who they are right now um with their caps on but as soon as they are we'll, we'll get an update on on, on who exactly is there, who has uh, withdrawn, and we'll see how many athletes we have. Um, so, we have uh, also, we got this from, from Barbados, we do have Matthew Wright, he's 30 years old, and he'll be one of the oldest competitors, um, and he's a strong, seasoned athlete, travels well, um, and then we, I don't think we have anybody that, um, we don't have the the uh, reigning champions from from last year yes um uh present so uh, we've got some of the some of the best triathletes in the world right here but uh, number eight matthew right let's see what 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 he's capable of doing um and uh yeah we don't uh, remember a lot of these athletes did come and and race um, last week in south africa and uh, they also did race in the world champs a few weeks ago so let's see what they what they're able to do it's supposed to hold on to. We can see there's more athletes than there, than there is a bar. So they'll probably be standing behind a certain line. And we'll see if they can spread out. So, uh, uh, and they're on starters orders. Matthew Wright is just in from the Asian Cup in Jordan. So he will be looking to improve on that performance. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see where these athletes are. I don't know, many of them may only have traveled in the last day or two and still have that fatigue in themselves. But um, yeah, just so racing over the last few weeks, that either improves an athlete or it fatigues an athlete. We can see the horn's gone, they're off, they're into the water, they need to go over that, over the seaweed that's there. This morning they did clean out a lot of that, but as the tide comes in, that does bring it back in. There's a jostling for position. And we'll see them uh, try and move into an arrowhead position as they try and get enough of a um, uh, of a slipstream from this. It's 28 degrees outside. Um, I don't know, Otis, how you, if you agree with me. I think it's probably a little bit um, warmer than 28. It feels warmer than that outside. Definitely, yes. um, and then we can see the wind from the teardrop banners outside us here. You can see the, the wind's now really coming from the south. Um, and that's going to have an effect, not in the water, but definitely it's going to have an effect on them in the on the on the ride, and yes. not necessarily the run. Um, so let's see what effect that has. But um, right now the swell it seems to be less choppy than it was with the ladies, yes, because yes. this wind has now changed direction. Um, so you can see the water is not as choppy as it was. There are a few waves on the opposite end, uh, but that's typical of just the tide coming in and out. That's where the boats come. And there's the arrowhead we've spoken about. There might even be a second one forming. But it's a straight line to that first boy. Yes. Everybody has to get their left shoulder around that boy before moving on to the second boy. And we'll see what happens when, the, when that does happen. Quite a bit of jostling there. 36, getting around athletes. It. 36 athletes in total. Yeah, I think, there, I think there's probably about 34 out there right now. I, I, I know we had one or two uh, withdrawals. Um, and um, so we'll see what does happen and we'll be able to then identify who they were. I knew that, um, I know that uh, Christian Hutting from South Africa, uh, number 32, I know he was planning to withdraw um, pending um, further investigations, but because uh, he wasn't feeling well earlier. Yes. And if, I, I mean, I even had a look at him and uh, just to, 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 to verify that. So we'll see what happens going f going when they come out of the water. Remember, they have to run out of the water and then go on to around a boy. So yes. you'll see that much, there is much of a muchness when it comes to the swim with these athletes. They will all swim at probably round about the same pace and get out there. That's when it will make a difference having to run around a boy and get back into the water. 
that may be what separates the front runners from the next group. So yes. we're probably going to see a group of um, five to ten athletes come out in the front. And then it depends if you're going at that pace. What does that take out of your body? What does that cost you? Because it always everything costs something. Yes. And uh, if it costs you too much, then on the bike when an attack is made, you're not able to stay with that because you did give too much on the swim to stay with that front pack. So that's why it's so exciting watching a triathlon because there are so many uh, different dynamics. Now look at the beautiful stroke of number 19 who is in front, Oliver Turner from Great Britain. So... He's there. Beautiful pictures we're getting to see behind him. Number six, Martin Demut from Austria. That's uh, that's there. So we're, that's just on his feet. And you can see that they're, they're not able to just swim. He has to sight. So you'll see when he breathes, he's looking forward. Yes. You'll see he's left his head up to the front, not to the side, which is inefficient, but allows you to swim straighter and be more efficient in how you're swimming. So he won't look at every stroke, but you can see there he's going around that next boy, making sure with his left shoulder around it. And now he's going to be coming out of the water, and you can see he's actually got the swell going against him. Yes. Um, and, and, and that does affect your position. He'll be running out. He's going to come run with his left shoulder or with his right shoulder around, that bo uh, around the marker. And that run is a killer, let me tell you. He's back in the water, and he's actually going to put in a little bit of a lead. Yes. The two other guys on his tail, <coughs> uh, other athletes, Martin Dumut, and I, I couldn't catch the other number, they will probably be trying to sit on his feet because he seems to be very efficient the way he's swimming yes. and the way he's um, able to just um, keep the rhythm going. And if they can sit there, they will gain a lot by just sitting there. Yes, the, field, the, the field have actually stretched now. Yeah, so the field is going to stretch out depending on the strength of the different athlete. And uh, that's why it's so important. So they're going to be swimming in a clockwise uh, manner and always trying to keep the left shoulder around the uh, boy. And um, they're going back out now to that far boy that we can see at the uh, um, top of the triangle there. 750 and meters. In total for the two laps. Two laps. Um, I think it's closer to to, um, to a kilometer after they've run into the swimming area. Uh -huh. Remember, they if your goggles get knocked off or your um, or your cap gets knocked off, you need to hold on to those um, until you come at what you go Drop into the in swim with. Uh, You've got to go out with It's very difficult with a wetsuit as watertight as these are. To put that anywhere, we saw earlier in one of the races, and I think the boy, the boys or the junior elite, um, the cap had come off, yes. and uh, he then had to hold it in his hand, which means he's got to, he's got to uh, uh, swim with a fist, and that is a massive disadvantage wow. um, if you're swimming with your fist closed. Again, they come around that second. Okay, so that is um, number 22 is in, in in third place there, Jesus Jimenez. Jimeno from Spain, and uh, we'll see what, what he's able to do. And may p possibly the three of them, Great Britain, from Spain and from Austria, can work together to see w the way forward um, if they're a group of three. And we can see there is now definitely a, a gap between them and the, and, the, and the athletes that are behind them. There must be a group of now five to seven behind them. But again, depends on how fast you are willing to do your transition. Yes. And we saw in the ladies' race how Romania, um, how she ran out of the water behind the three Dutch girls and actually Gajozova went ahead of them into transition. Yes. Uh, Rachel Klamer was quite seamless in, in that she just carried on at a steady pace and then got out and got onto the bike first out of the bike. Yes. So very interesting to see how that... Um, how that is going to uh, uh, play out with, amongst the men. They're on their second loop. Notice how the race is much faster than the other age group races that we did uh, uh, comment on yes. and that we did uh, uh, watch earlier today. Coming around that second boy, our, our coverage is absolutely phenomenal. We're getting such good uh, coverage um, and we're so grateful to be able to, to, to get that from both our sponsors and from NTV to be able to be in and, and, and get this amount of coverage, uh, which we don't often get at other races. Um, we're seeing more than the spectators in the outside are seeing because they're standing on the shore there watching this. Yes. Um, so, quite drawn out now, and this is what we see. The longer the race, the more distance there will be between the athletes, 
and uh, people will play to their strengths. And some of them you'll find will now make a last final search to get us close to them. You see that? Yes. Number 22, yes. Jesus Jimenez. Uh, Jimeno trying to just sit on his hip to be able to get out of the water at the same time. Yes. And you may even find that some of these athletes um, get bonuses from their sponsors for being the first person out of the water. Wow. Um, and um, so that's that, that might be why he, um, he's, he's surging ahead. Might also be that he needs to get out of the water first because he has a slower run or a slower transition than from Great Britain, Oliver Turner. Yes, David, I've learned to hold my tongue when it comes to triathlons because things are very, very unpredictable out here. You've convinced me that anything can really happen, but they are the first three. They are out of the water now. Another group of three to six um, behind them. And depending on how fast they transition, that, that'll determine. I think that's probably, we'll probably get our podium places out of these first six to nine men. Um, but remember, people are racing for, and athletes are racing for points. So we can see they, they, they're coming, they're coming, and they're going to be coming past us right now. Yes. Quite a nice crowd from of From Spain, spectators. from Austria, from Great Britain, and behind them, from Kazakhstan, also Denmark. Irish, Denmark. We're so grateful to have people all the way from, from, uh, from Eastern Europe and from uh, uh, Northern Europe, from Scandinavia, being part of our program here today. We also and, have uh, an we're Egyptian. Grateful. Yeah, we do also have from... So Jimenez, notice how he's got, he's getting his helmet on. He's struggling just to get that, um, just to get the wetsuit. He needs to put it into his container, right? He's got his bike and he's out. So let's see if he's able to, to, to mount first. The Austrian is right there alongside him and the Great Brit from Great Britain. We've got Oliver Turner. So the three of them, the three gentlemen that swam first, they together. Then we have this group of four to six that are just behind them that are going to try and be able to catch them. And now we see the rest of the, the group. Iskakov coming in there from Kazakhstan. We're going to have quite a few of these guys trying to just... And it's always good to be in a group, especially if you have a very strong runner amongst them and you can get them to... Um, uh, or a very strong biker. Awesome pace. And you can get them all to ride together. That's important. So we're probably going to get our podium places out of this group of four... And just behind them, there's a group of four to six that's trying to bridge the gap. So you can see there from Ireland, they're trying to get on that wheel of the fourth. And, and I think they're going to be able to do it. And that what's then going to happen is you're going to have a group of about 10 guys riding together, 10 athletes. And it's, they're going to be probably be attacking each other at some point because you cannot, um, you can't go onto the run with a group that big. Yes. So from Algeria as well, we're so grateful to have our North African uh, um, colleagues and uh, 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 brothers here and out on the bike there they go and remember this hill notice how much faster they're doing it than our age group athletes did it yes, earlier today yes. it's just phenomenal seeing them go up there and just to see the the physiques and the tenacity of them they're coming on this road now that drives goes towards the north past the dome uh, uh, um, hotel and convention center which is also part of our uh, our sponsorship we're, we're panning all the way around back to here yeah, at the transition zone from one of our drones. That group in front, I just wanted, I'd like us to see how big that group is and then we'll be able to tell you who's there. I think that James Edgar from Ireland is also in that group. Um, and he managed to bridge that gap for the yes. four of them. So uh, in, the, in the right in the front, we had Martin de Moot uh, from Austria. We had Oliver Turner from Great Britain. And we had Jesus Jimenez, Jimeno. Um, Seven riders. That's a look uh, at two. Seven, seven riders up eight? front. Okay, that's great. There's a nice big group that's forming there. And you'll see, and you'll see them um, now start rotating. So some of the guys will definitely be uh, getting their, uh, uh, um, their breath back. What we see there is here's an official, yes. a technical official. Uh, from World Triathlon, they found a wetsuit that is not in its container. 
So uh, there will be a penalty. penalty. And it'll probably be a 10-second penalty, which will be served um, on the bike or after the bike. Um, oh. And... Uh, yeah, it's just all part of safety because somebody coming back in with their bike, it, it, it knocks over somebody's uh, wetsuit. That can be a big problem. So everything here is uh, geared towards safety and towards some form of conformity. And um, it's, it's, it's important for, for, for us as athletes. And we really appreciate that. Having been in the technical briefings, I realized uh, more and more what that means to us as, um, as the, the spectators watching. There we have our venue from yep. above. That's our venue. That's us there sitting in the le bottom right-hand corner. And there uh, we can see beautiful Swakopmund. We can't believe it that this morning this was all covered in mist. We couldn't see absolutely anything. And that is a miracle we get to experience every day here in Swakopmund in Namibia. We're so proud of who we are and what we are. Four seasons in one day. Yeah, very we true. Have it all. Very true. So now they get to see the other riders and that will put some impetus into them. So that group has now swelled and I think that's the second group on the road. We saw there was a lot of athletes that were there and these guys were swimming maybe 20, 30 seconds slower yes. and that, that gap they've maintained now on that. So in that front group definitely we have uh, the Irish triathlete James Edgar, we have Martin Demuth. Um, Oliver Turner and uh, Jimeno from Spain. Um, definitely the four. I can't. We are still not able to identify the other riders. Um, and if that is the front group, then we can see there's other riders bridging across to that group. There's a group of ten of the 36 or 34 leading the pack now. Eleven. Eleven riders. Eleven riders. So, so, so the peloton up front is growing. Yeah. What, what that, what does that signify? So, if the if the group is this big, what you're gonna find is that um, it's gonna depend because this course is small, sharp, and technical. You'll probably find that um, uh, the technical, the guys that can ride technically. Um, you know, I've been, I was in Tokyo at the uh, Olympics there. And uh, the course was very technical, and they found that uh, even in the team event, those that could ride the, the technical uh, um, could ride technically well. Yes, they weren't pulling away, but they were using less energy because they weren't having to break and power, break and power. So yes. your technical skill here is important because when you come up to this turn and be coming up to a head, that a lot could happen um, in that turn. Losing a position, losing a wheel, not being able to pull out your bottle and just have that much needed hydration that you, that you need. That's the yes. first thing. Yes. The second thing is, as they go through this group, many of these athletes will know what the running capability of some of the other athletes are around them. So they will know that if somebody else there is a 10 seconds per kilometer faster than them, uh -huh. they will then try and either break that person on the, um, on the, um, on the ride or they will pull away from them so that they've gone a break on their own and therefore get into transition faster than them. Um, so we can already see, look, uh, as they come around that corner, you'll see the technical skills of everybody is not exactly the same. Yes. So they're the last two riders have lost the wheel. And it may have been that the, that the athlete right at the back had just uh, done a turn and had pulled off to the back. And now he's having to power and fight. So you can see yes. he's now powered yes. ahead and he's now sitting right there. So the rider right at the back may not have been as technically skilled. He might just be tired or have just been putting his bottle back in. We can see. There we go. So uh, Richard Murray from the Netherlands, originally from South Africa, in that second, uh, in that second position on that, um, on uh, in that group. Um, and then of course we also have uh, Martin de Moot uh, from from Austria. We also have uh, James Edgar from Ireland in that group, um, and then Oliver Turner and Jimeno. So I, I'm, we're yet to see who the other riders are that are in that group. Uh, if we get a close-up when they come past, that'll be great. We'll be able to see who that is. This is the first, the first, uh, the first chasing group. Yeah, yes. we see the yes. first chasing group. Yes. 
So, so the front pack we've just heard has got a has got a split, and that's going to be because of the technical uh, nature of the course, yes. and not necessarily because they 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 um, they are pushing it. Yes. It might just be because of we we know that the bottom of the lighthouse there are a lot of turns that the other guys um, may not be able to navigate as smoothly as some of them are able to do. So um, Richard Murray, um, we can almost say um, home advantage. He knows Swakopmund, he knows this area, he knows how things work here, um, and he's also technically a really good rider, having won the Xterra which yes. is the off-road triathlon series. He's won Xterra South Africa before. So Richard Murray does know how to ride technically um, from a young age, and we'll see what, what he's able to do with this group. And I think they've already broken up that group. So we'll see when they come around here. So there's some exceptional talent in display here today. Yeah, so there's, there, there, amongst, amongst the, the guys uh, racing today, we have definite um, podium medals for um, for different events on ITU and for um, uh, for world championships and and even for Olympics. So um, you'll find some of these um, uh, some of these athletes can can race at at, at Olympic speed, <laughs> um, and they may do that depending on whether they're strong on the bike or the swim or the run. And we'll Good have to stuff. see where that goes. Where that goes. So now they've got the wind pushing them behind them. So you can see that group has already broken up. They are. Are they still the eleven together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's only eight of them now, and already these two at the back are struggling. Although the wind is coming from behind on this section, so we'll have to see what that um, what that means. But you can see there's a nice rotation between them, and and you'll notice these two right at the back aren't even part of the uh, rotation um, to, to 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 slip in the front. Yes. So the temperature has shot up to 28 Celsius degrees. I think the temperature feels a lot worse than that or a lot hotter than that out there on the course because we have very low, low, low humidity in a place that is known for its humidity. There's so also a wind of 19 knots per hour uh, west. 19 kilometers per hour. That's, that's a sure, that, that wind is not too strong out there um, at 19 kilometers per hour. I don't see that being or affecting them really because they haven't formed any sort of echelon they're all still riding um, in two columns right next to each other so if the wind gets really strong when they turn around now you'll be able to see if the wind is really strong they'll be turning and then you'll see they'll sit with the the front guy will sit with his uh, nose in the wind yes. and then you'll be able to see from which side the wind is coming but I don't think you will see it now on the turn. So here they come. And again, very smooth turn. Notice how they turn. They're very good at it. They know what they're doing. Um, these are guys that are technically very skilled. Um, and here they come. To, they're coming back past the dome now on that same road. And we'll be able to see what they do when they come there. So the, you, you can see the wind is probably coming from the left-hand side, the front. Because the because the front r rider is sitting here protecting. Now notice there, just because of a little um, the little turnaround, technically what has happened is that a group has has formed a four in front, and the others had to power to get back to them. Yes. This group is about 40 plus seconds behind them, um, and this is the big group. So some of the uh, athletes from the front group have now fallen back or been swallowed up by this group. And yes. they can work together very nicely and even catch this front group, but it would definitely mean that they would put out a lot of energy, a lot of power, invest a lot into them. That's where you race with your countrymen yes. so that you or your friends, and then they help you out to get back onto that. There we have a third group coming um, around, and we'll have to see what, what, what that amounts to. Notice again, quickly, uh, a gap forms, and suddenly you have to power to get back in. Um, and so you, you're going to have to see some of these athletes are not as strong as the others are on the bike. Um, and it may be that the, the, the guys in front are just the, that are in the engine room there in the front are just simply pushing as hard as they can to break these off. Because remember, they're doing four laps of 5Ks. Yes. So 
you'll see what happens when uh, they when they come around now for their second lap. Um, this is a this is the third big group. You can see it's a significant gap, but they are here because they are trying to gain uh, UCI points. Uh, the um, to be able to um, qualify for other races and for the Olympics and the such. So they're going to come around this corner and then probably the wind is going to be in their face, not these three athletes, the front bunch of about eight. And then we'll see where the, where the wind's coming from based on where the, how and how they turn. One of the South Africans in the race just uh, passed there, the turn. Now here are the leaders of the pack. And they are full speed. So now you can see and you realize that the wind is probably coming off the sea into their faces because they're in a straight line. Also that the speed has picked up because there aren't two rows of riders. We can see one or two riders trying to position and come to the front. And now we can realize the wind is probably coming from this right hand side um, because you can see them sheltering on the left there. The yes. other riders sheltering yes. on the left there. And you'll find your strongest riders will take one or two longer turns in the front because that will um, improve um, the speed and allow riders to fall off the back or just sit on. So here they come round for the second lap. They're going to pass our transition zone in about 10 seconds. And they are, you again see that there's a gap forming. But it might be that the guys at the back are technically skilled and they are able to do the turn. So we'll see what happens because every time they've come down towards our historic lighthouse here, yes. then um, we've seen that uh, the group splits and then they fight to get back on. Here they come past transition. We're near here. Let's see what happens. This is the, the third lap now? This is the, this is the second lap. Second. So they, when, they, when they've come around here and come back for past transition, they'll be going on to their third lap. Yes. And that will be uh, very interesting to see if somebody tries to make a... So yes, uh, for you that's uh, joining us on DSTV channel 285, as well as GoTV channel 94, welcome. We hope you are enjoying the action here as it is unfolding. Uh, please tell your neighbors, tell your friends that uh, we are watching the Africa Triathlon Cup uh, and it's happening right here in Swakopmund. We've got a field of 36 top class athletes competing for honors here in Swakopmund and this is the elite men doing their thing. It's interesting to see how these three I have uh, gone round the bend and they've actually had a very good uh, turn there. So you see the technical part near the lighthouse and they've now come round there and you find that the other athletes are having to really fight uh, to stay on the wheel and to get uh, ahead. So we'll see what, what, how many of them have now fallen off here. See the rider, they play second. Keep so you can see how technical peaking. that is. Keeps on peeking over his shoulder. <laughs> and again, they go out. Quite a technical course, as you can see. And now the wind is behind them. So you'll find many of these guys are able to, many of these athletes are able to fall back on and to get back on. But it, how, much, how much are you going to spend doing yes. that? Yes. And will you have anything left to go on to the run? Uh -huh. This is the third lap, and this is where we're going to see halfway through. It's 10 Ks. This race is in the red. This is a sprint triathlon. You've got to leave it all out there. There must be nothing left. Now, I know Richard Murray is in this group, and uh, he's a phenomenal runner. Yes. So we'll see what he does coming into the run. Um, but you don't want to go into the run. Uh, with too much baggage and too many athletes that you need to look at and look for. So the, ri the ride right now, very important. We're halfway through the ride. At some point, somebody's going to make a, uh, a make a move. And we, we see that every time well, this group was up to 11. Now there's six of them in the front. There's these two behind. If they are able to catch on, we've seen those are the same two that have been sitting behind at 
and that may be a move uh, for a to conserve energy, but also move because they can't go any faster. Um, the, the, that pace in the front is crazy fast. We'll have to see what happens with uh, the, them coming around halfway through the third loop of five k's on this 20k loop, and then they've got a a 5k run, and the run is going to be blisteringly fast because it's 1.25 kilometer loops four of those loops and we've seen how fast they can be but also how technical so you don't get a chance to just be smooth and yes, and ride yes. so so we, we just saw uh, the Netherlands uh, cleansing the ladies section of the elite uh, and it looks like Murray is up for a surprise here do you think it can be a double for the, uh, for the Netherlands to take this, um, it's very possible. I think the Netherlands is a, has got a very strong team. Uh, the Netherlands is very intentional. Um, but uh, there are quite a few guys that are on form at the moment um, that raced last week. And um, there are also many guys that are coming here, many athletes that want to really do well in order to get the points so there's there's a there's a, there's a real mix of, of yes. people here so yes. we don't we can't say that the netherlands or south africa is going to do really well because they yes. now suddenly um they are homegrown but it's, it's not necessarily like that yes. so we'll have to see what happens over the everything as gets left out there on the run and we'll see what happens as the as this next group of about nine riders uh comes up there and you can see they are really putting on the pace trying to catch and to put in time into this group and I, I definitely think one or two of the um, that pre of the other group will be able to catch on to the this group um, on the run and possibly even take a place or two yes. um, because of transition still happening and the run being so brutal but we'll have to see what happens as they're going to be coming into the wind now again so anybody wanting to really up the pace is going to be sp expending a lot of energy to be able to put up the pace. You can see they two across or three across. We have the same two or three athletes right at the back. We have the same men in the engine room at the front pushing. The wind is now coming from the right hand side from the coast. Um, you can see crowds there, um, just fans just shouting at them. Yes. And the great thing about the course is that you are able to see the other athletes come past you. You're able to see the next group and you're able to then uh, calculate how far do I have until yes. I get to there. Yes, you and, can strategize. Uh, yeah, you can strategize. But it can also be very disheartening thinking you're running, you're riding on the rivet, you're on the edge of it, you can't yes. go anymore, and there's people that are ahead of you by more than a minute. So it's, um, it, it, it definitely, this knife definitely cuts both ways. Yes. A triathlon yes. Is, such, is such a cruel mistress. It really leaves you out there, um, and you put everything on the line, and that can amount to very little... Um, in ITU points or points yes. towards your country. So let's see what happens over the next few kilometers as they're coming in. They're coming back towards us. They're coming back towards the, the shore, back towards the beach area uh, where, the, uh, where our transition zone is and they'll be going past there. Again, this is where the wind is straight into their faces and you can see, but they are going slightly downhill. Yes. So the pace will pick up and they'll form one straight line you see that the athletes will try and form a second line, especially if the wind starts being stronger from this right-hand side. Um, and you can even see how they now form a little bit of an echelon. So they're not in a straight line. Yes. It starts leaning like a chevron sign. It's called an echelon so that you can expend as little energy as possible. The wind's now coming straight off the sea here towards them. And then they take this technical turn because they have to go down this little palm tree there that's in front of them. And those bikes shouldn't be that close to them. Yes, please get the bikes out of the way. Uh, because they can draft behind that bike. Yes. And again, the rider has dropped right off. So I'm wondering if that rider doesn't have a technical or if that's a rider that is from a previous group but, but that they've lapped. But I don't think so. I think he may have a technical. He's looking down at his wheel at the back. He's looking down at his wheel. He's looking down. They are now going to be coming towards us here and uh, interesting to see
for the run that's in one and a half kilometer that's that's in about five and a half kilometers so, so the concentration level must be extreme yeah especially because um it's important that you eat while this is all happening so you can't just sit and ride you also need to eat because on the bike off the bike you are not going to have time to do that at all so is this Martin de Moot number six um, the other uh, Noah Kuntz also from Austria I don't know if he's featuring but there we go so we have these four and oh he's looking down he's looking down there's something technical that's happened there he has no seat on that bicycle. That's what's happened. He lost his seat. Don't know how that happens um, in a race, but I do know how it happens before a race. You pack your own bike, you travel thousands of kilometers, and uh, you put your bike together. going to put some urgency into the group and you're going to see how the group is going to respond to that probably by catching him but then they will either if he's feeling strong they may want to push him out the back or use him to pull three or four riders away um, and this cat and mouse play happens the whole time again we're so grateful to Swakopmund constituency to the the city the councilman for um, having road closure and we see uh, what happens as we go on to the next section of this course. They're going past that boulevard. That goes past the dome once again. We'll see where they end up now. Temperatures, definitely well over 28 out there. Ambient temperature with just a gentle breeze. Yes, and uh, a slight breeze out there. We can see the branches moving. Uh, but as you pointed out, that might not impact uh, the cyclists so much. There's still about eight riders up front leading the rest of the field. So we just heard that some of these riders are, are riding out there at over 60 kilometers per hour. Um, just trying to push that power on certain sections. So we'll see the groupies again all back together. We'll have to see what comes of it. We'll have to see uh, if they are able to pull off one or two of these um, athletes. Two, four, six, eight, nine. It looks as if it's, they are nine athletes together. So no Namibian on this uh, uh, taking part in the men's race. Yes. We'll have to see if that uh, can change in the future. I'm really grateful that there's so many South Africans uh, but we'd love for, for that to happen. Uh, Do we have someone that can step into this position? Well, we have uh, the Nathan Chase that, that raced this morning. Uh, we've got quite a few of the other juniors that, that raced that can race up at this level. Notice how smoothly they, they turn again. And you will again get an attack out of this area. Yes. Austrian on the back and another Austrian in the pack. So this is them coming around for the last time here. Yeah? They're going to be coming uh, back towards us over the next two and a half k's and then do that short loop that goes down to the lighthouse. Very technical corner. And I think somebody there is definitely going to try and make some move yes. in order to get away so that they can have a smoother transition and just get out of transition quickly. Because if somebody is able to get out quickly and get up this little incline that we have here and out of sight, that automatically puts that out of mind and that means they can build up a quicker gap so well, let's see what the strategies amount to yes now we must know that these guys already cycle uh, swim uh, about a, a 750 stretch they are doing a 20 kilometer bike ride and then they will be up for a five kilometer run yeah so this is a sprint distance which is exactly half of the Olympic distance. Olympic is a 1.5k swim, 40k bike, and a um, 10 kilometer run. And typically, 
most of the races around the world would be um, Olympic distance because for the Olympics. So uh, to qualify by certain places, you have a sprint, and uh, it's it's very exciting. But it is in the red the whole way, just under an hour, very little time to make any mistake, very little time to eat, or very little time for respite. So we see the group of nine, eight, nine of them coming again back into um, back into the Swakopmund uh, uh, beachfront area. They'll be coming around that technical corner, and then they'll be uh, heading towards our transition point and then going past us for that very technical last turn and then when that happens we'll find them coming into transition tell, so, tell me tell me about the bikes these guys are using so the bike has to be itu and uci legal so there's certain bikes that you can use at other races that are a lot more aero in position but that's not allowed here so you have to use a bike you can also use um, uh, the short bars on the front, yes. time trial bars, yes. but they may not extend beyond your hoods of your brakes mm. because it's dangerous for you to put to lie on those bars like they do in a time trial race or in an Ironman event yes. because you can't reach because it's a draft legal race. So in draft legal races, it's very different. you see most of them just have a racing bike. They've got their arms, their hands on the hoods or in the drops. The guys in the front are in the hoods uh, in the drops and you can you can see they're actually putting a quite a bit of power into it. the two guys in the front there uh, I've got South Af looks like South African kits um, they are really putting down some some power and rotating nicely through the front there uh, this is the second group that is coming around again smooth smoothly around and definitely the you get a you get a whiplash effect so the guys at the back have to really power to get up to the yes. front again and to be able to sit in the front. How um, much do you spend on such a bike? So bicycles these days, uh, carbon bikes with the, um, with the deep section wheels as well as the group sets which are quite expensive and electronic these days. You're looking at about 150,000 to 200,000 Rand for these bicycles. A lot of them have disc brakes as well. I think yes. almost all of them are now on disc brakes. And, and we have the, uh, the capability locally to service these bikes. Uh, we do, we do. So Ma Money's Bike Mecca is the, um, is the technical uh, bike uh, sponsor and partner. And uh, we, we were talking earlier about a lot of these bikes are ve we, we service and we look after very similar bikes with very similar group sets. Um, quite comfortably in Namibia. So we're going to see all the crowds are moving back into transition because the run is about to happen for the front group of eight or nine. And you're going to see them come in here. And, um, Otis, will you look out to see who doesn't have a saddle? Because one of them is riding without a saddle. And uh, we don't know what, what the story is. I think it's one of the... I think it's the Austrian rider, but let's yes. see what it is yes. when they come in. They will now on that technical bend, be taking their feet out of their shoes. Yes. And putting their feet onto their pedals. And then, as they here they come. And when they do that, they'll come over and they'll be stepping with their legs over. Yes. First one approaching. Yeah, there's Richard Murray flying the Netherlands flag now. On the line, they get off. So, who doesn't have a saddle? Demut. So they'll be running at under three minutes a kilometer. Richard Murray, known for his running. The Mut. From Austria. So he... It looked like he was the one without the saddle. He, was, he rode most of the race without his saddle. And everything is still at a very fast pace. For the um, elite athletes, at, at a sprint,
at sprint distance everything is done in the red as fast as you can so it'll be interesting to find out what happened when his his seat came off and how he managed to stay the whole way with that group he probably would have just stood it's only 20 kilometers but uh, he would have used a lot of his hamstrings his hamstrings would be firing glutes would be firing and now to do a run that will really eat it out of him so there we have Richard Murray in the front and Richard Murray is, is known to be a, a, a fast runner so this is his strongest uh, discipline yes. and we'll see what he's able to do so again the Netherlands in the front I know Richard does spend uh, quite a bit of time in uh, doing training camps in Namibia uh, with a Dutch team uh, with his wife Rachel Klamer so we'll um, so we know there's a little bit of knowledge of the course and understanding the weather here yes. he goes around that dear farmer there's the Austrian in second is that the Spanish Matthew Wright from Barbados in third wow So in terms of coming to uh, acclimatize in Namibia, why do they do it? Well, Namibia is a great place, um, firstly because it's safe, um, so it's, 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 it's there, and then secondly it's cheaper, it's cheaper than living uh, in Boulder, Colorado, it's cheaper than living somewhere um, in Scandinavia. Yes. Um, at altitude, uh, or like a lot of athletes that go to Mallorca. So that's, that's one of the reasons. Um, uh, it's safe. And then we have uh, beautifully serviced roads. And uh, we have friendly people. And then we're at altitude. Good in, stuff. Uh, most of the country is at altitude. So the here we have more. Place. More runners. More people running off the bike. And they're dismounting. They are now going to go into transition. Put their bikes and then in regulation. Take off their helmets. And put on their shoes and get out there. Richard Murray is going coming around for his first lap. So this is he's currently going at sub three. He's running at sub three per kilometer, and that is look how smooth that looks. Yes, and it opened quite a significant stretch at the lead. So most of the uh, competitors have now just embarked from the bikes. So most of the right, most of the athletes are now out on the finish with the bike onto the run. Yes, two more athletes coming in, uh, getting off the bike, and going into the run, and that's where. And Richards already finished his first lap, and he's got a commanding lead. But he, he needs to not slow his pace now because they are really strong peop, uh, guys that were in his group. Yes. And those athletes will be able to see him and they'll get into their rhythm. They'll be able to see him. He's got four laps to complete. He's got, he's got yeah, four, four more. laps. He's done one now. Three to go. Yeah, he's got three. So it's amazing. The crowds have become larger. People are shouting for for these athletes all along the way, clapping. Yes. Old ladies walking their dogs, even stopping to clap. That's great. And yeah, they help them up the hill. There's Richard on his second lap, and he's going at a blistering pace. All the way and from the Netherlands. So he's getting a great rhythm going. Got to throw your helmet into the container. Regulation, and now you got to get out there. From South Africa, 
one of the younger guys getting out there. So there, Richard's coming along the boulevard. He's coming around for his second lap. So he is blitzing these laps. I saw uh, George Alarcon, familiar from Mexico, had a good start, but faded. Yeah, so uh, it depends on how strong your your swim is and then uh, if you can maintain that on the bike. And that's why it's important that uh, all three disciplines are reasonably strong. We have another Japanese athlete coming in. He's coming in for the transition. He's off the bike and he's going to start running. But that's Richard Genta Murray, Uchida. That's probably, yeah, Uchida. Coming and he comes round. There's, yeah, that's Ushida. He's gonna put his bike up and then get going. So Richard Murray, Murray is ri riding at a pace that is uh, the mountain bike in front of him with the lead guy is having to really stick with it. Yo, and we can see these athletes. They are fast, and these are the guys that are not even in the lead. So very, very interesting that they are able to run at this pace, Richard Murray. And once again, as, as the race is proceeding, Richard just continuing with his pace, stretching the, the gap. Yeah, so yeah, I think he had a beautiful transition. So he came into transition zone first off the, off the bike. And also he, the, those last few uh, turns, he was technically much stronger. So he could get out there, and he got out um, just slightly ahead. We have the second group coming around now. And then um, Richard was then off the bike and got into, and then up this first hill, he made that little bit of a gap, which is what I, which is what I said. So yes. if he gets ahead on the yes. gap, then that makes a big difference to him. He's got two more laps to do. Um, he's gone round now for his third lap and then his fourth. So he's going to come round one, one more. time past transition. So yeah, that's also interesting that this, uh, we, had a, we had a triathlete in that first group riding without a saddle. And he's probably going to feel that on the, on the run now because he had to use so much of his uh, legs. Yes, but uh, yes. it's great. And Richard is just in his own pace. He made the gap initially and now he's just staying there. And these other athletes are playing catch up at the moment. Be interesting if we can swing around and see who's in second. Let's see how far back uh, the guys in second are. So they are going to be a staggered group. So some of these are guys are, some of these athletes are in their yes. second lap, some of them are still on their first lap. Um, and, and you wouldn't, we wouldn't know right now, but they are going to know. So Ushida, that's coming around for the first lap. And Murray's about to lap Ushida. Ushida. He's catching and up with Ushida. Just because uh, Richard Murray had such a strong bike. Yes. Yeah, yes. so coming out of the swim, got to get in that front group because that's where your podium's going to come from on the bike over the sprint distance over the Olympic distance probably also anything longer and there, there's a lot more grace but initially there is, there's just no grace so Richard's going to be feeling a gentle breeze on his face um, which is going to be great he's going to be very grateful for that yes. coming into this yes. oh great support for the South Africans great support for anybody from Africa right now and there's our leader the leader of the pack, the leader of the men's elite section, Richard Murray. That's a deer farmer turn and we can see now the wind starting to push from a different direction. And uh, it's still not so strong that it's going to affect our race. Um, and it'll simply cool them. So off the sea they get this breeze and he will be grateful for that. He really will be. So there's Richard Murray coming around for his final lap. So he's going to come around and he's going to do one more lap. Phenomenal runner. 
And if he gets into that right pack of the bike, um, off the swim and onto the bike and off the bike, then he's normally uh, commanding on the run. Comes to transition for the last time. He's run and level. he's running under three minutes a kilometer. And uh, uh, for all of our audience, I dare you to go out and try and run one kilometer under three kilometers. And uh, they say the better you are, the smoother you make it look and the easier you make it look. So that's what we're seeing happen so, here. So what would be going through his mind at this stage of the race? So at this stage, uh, what's going to be great for him is him having been able to pass other athletes because that kind of gives you a bit of a boost, a bit of a kick to know I've now, I've now gone past somebody that started the race at the same time as I did. That'll be great. But then uh, besides that, he just wants to maintain this. And I can tell you that he's probably very, he's, he's going at race pace and he's probably at his limit, but, he's, uh, but you're not seeing it because he learns to be comfortable at, at, uh, and suffer like this. Yes. Um, and that's what he's doing. So you'll see him keep going at this pace for the last lap because uh, luckily it's his last lap. So if he has nothing left, he's still going to give some. Because uh, they, because you learn and you train to do this. Well, um, so a peek over his shoulder there. Oh, he did. That's great. So again, he's looking over his shoulder. So it, it, it tells me, well, one of two things: either he wants to get into a rhythm and just keep it there a little bit slower to see if there really is somebody behind him that can catch him, or number two is he's feeling great and he just wants to be able to gauge where he is. Remember, when you hear feet behind you. That makes you nervous, but on a short, close loop like this, yes. he's probably sitting and uh, wondering why he's hearing somebody else's footsteps. You're going to hear a lot of people that are one lap behind you, two laps behind you. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And that's that's what we're seeing here. So that's why we're also uh, struggling to place, place who's in second, who's in third, uh, because the course is uh, quite tight. And there he goes, he's having water. So he's... So he's about a kilometer away from us. You can see in the distance beyond that green gazebo. On top of that, that's where we are sitting. And we are out there. So what an amazing course. What amazing conditions today. I could not believe. We could not have prayed or asked for a better day. Slight breeze, warm day, starts out cool and misty, just like we predicted, just like Swakopmund loves to show the world. And uh, we're so grateful to be here as Richard Murray, formerly of South Africa, recently of the Netherlands, um, ha comes in. And he's coming along that beach boulevard, and he'll enjoy this because uh, people will be able to shout at him and cheer him on and speak English or Afrikaans to him. Yes. as he comes past and that'll be very good for him and this will be great for points towards his um, campaign for the next Olympics and in ITU and in the world champs so, so, so David it's a Dutch double it'll be a Dutch double so Barbara de Quinn coming in in the in the women and Richard Murray coming in the men's and here he comes we can hear the crowds we can hear everybody starting to cheer as he comes they're running towards the finish line. Here he comes. Let's see it. And he's really done an amazing race today. He's done beautifully. First touch of hands there. And he crosses the finishing line with a spring in his step. Yes, so good. So good to see him. Yeah. So... Really good for him to come back here and to do this. Holm. Holm from Denmark. Emil. We didn't mention him at all. We missed out on him. We're sorry about that. He came in second. And then right. We mentioned right when we started this from Barbados. Can you believe it? He came in. Right came in. Barbados. He came in in third. So Ayan Bissenbayer from Kazakhstan coming in in fourth. So from Denmark, Emil Holm. 
And in third, Matthew Wright. How would you rate the overall performance of the athletes in this section? Well, we can see the um, other runners coming in now, and uh, many of them are also coming in to finish. So you'll notice that the increment in the gaps between first to 10th is very small. Yes. As you see, guys sprinting now. Yes, athletes sprinting coming there from Austria, Demut. Very well done. And there's a Belgian athlete coming in. So a lot of them have come in. And you'll notice there's the, it's a big crowd at the finish line. And that's why Richard Murray did have to look around. And he had to do that initial surge out of the transition. And then he had to, after that, just stay there yes. and stay in that, uh, to keep maintain that gap. And that would not have been easy, maintaining that gap, especially when the other guys can see you, when athletes can see you. Um, and because the course is quite technical and in loops, they are able to see you and even time how much further ahead you are than they are. So very good race. There we go, Richard Murray. Well, we are joined by Richard Murray, uh, who just showcased world-class performance in the elite men category. Quickly, run, quickly run me through it. How was it? Yeah, that was a uh, that was an amazing race. It was great. Uh, it's my, only my second time in Swakop. First time I was 18, so a long time ago. But uh, yeah, amazing city. It was great. The swim was interesting. Two laps. We normally do one, so there was quite a lot of fighting <laughs> in the first swim. But, uh, and I was just off at the start of the first lap. Uh, I had to swim hard just to catch them running in after the swim. I managed to get in the front group. The guys worked really well together on the bike. And uh, then it went into my, my strength to run. So no, I was happy, very happy with it. Very, very happy with the performance. Okay. All in all, how do you feel about the route? How was the route for you today? Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite an out and back course. I mean, there's, there's lots of like cool sections. Maybe they should put a bit of gravel in or some of the inside roads through the city would really make it really beautiful to I think to the public and to the guys racing would be very cool. Um, but yeah, the course is great. The run course is amazing. It's great. It's like a little amphitheater, very close. So yeah, the laps are quite nice and close for the run. Uh, the bike maybe one, if they make a little bit closer to the lap, then people can see the guys coming past a bit more often. Okay, well, the fans surely were there for you, but congratulations with your internet. Thank you so much. And yeah, thanks to Namibian Triathlon and guys for putting on the events. The guys really enjoyed it. Awesome, awesome. Okay, well, we are looking for our man who came in second place. Ah, very, very tall man indeed. Quickly run me through it. How was the, 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 the championship, the cup for you today? Ah, it was amazing. Like the atmosphere here, crowds, course, everything just like was really nice. So I'm really happy to get second here behind Richard. He is my childhood hero. And yeah, so absolutely great day. In Namibia, 22 countries came and showed up for the African uh, Triathlon Cup that took place today. Uh, your, over, your overall take on how it, it was today, how was it? Oh, I think it was, everything just played out perfectly. Uh, everything has been going smooth, 100% good. Okay. All in all, how do you feel about your performance today? Mm, like 99% uh, happy. <laughs> There's always that 1% that is to keep up with Richard, but like in general, super happy, good swim. Like perfect transitions, tidy, good tactics on the bike. Everything just played out. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to him. Well, uh, the man who finished in, in third place. We had a chat yesterday. Uh, tell me, today, how do you feel? I'm over the moon, man. Like to get a podium, international podium is always amazing. Uh, we top boys like Richard Murray, you know, fourth place at the Olympics. Like he's a world class athlete, and to be battling with him. You know, it was just a really clean, solid race, and I'm, I'm over the moon. I'm, I mean, I feel like I want to vomit, but that, if you, you don't feel like that, you didn't work hard enough, you know? Okay, well, when we spoke yesterday, you said you have to be, you want to see yourself on the podium, and hey, at the end of the day, you're on it, so how do you feel about that? Oh, big man, I am over the moon, man. It's just like, it's all well and good talking a big talk yesterday, but to put it into action and deliver today, man, it's, it's just amazing. And yeah, I couldn't be happier, man. Leaving Africa with a medal around my neck. Everything's blessed, everything's sweet, everything's iry, man. Last question. Uh, the performance was amazing. You guys had a tight race from the get-go. You guys were very close. How was the route for you, and how did you find the competition? Yeah, no, the bike was challenging, man. It was a very technical with some humps, gravel, like... You know, you change from tarmac to cobbles. Um, I almost crashed on one of the laps. My chain slipped and like, I was min min millimeters away from crashing. But that's what it's about. You know, you have to be smart. You have to be have your head screwed on in this, level, this high level of racing. And the course out here challenged us to the, to the limit. There was wind, there was, yeah, there was cobbles, there was humps, there was all sorts. And um, yeah, so to come out with a good result, you have to have to put everything together. And I think that's what us three on the podium did today. 
Awesome. Matthew Wright, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Barbados. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much. Respect Namibia. I appreciate it. Well, you heard it from the man himself. He's thanking Namibia for his wonderful, wonderful performance. Well, we still have more interviews coming your way. We're trying to see who we can chat to in this one. Well, yeah, you saw uh, we just talked to Matthew Wright. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, so that was great. What a exciting finish to the, the race. Um, and amazing to see the amount of people that are out there. It's great to see this event like this. You know, you often go to events where they're trying to propagate uh, triathlon in a country and it's only officials and the athletes there. But here you can see there's families, there's people around. It's so good that we had the age groupers here earlier. We had the yes. kids on earlier and different uh, groups um, and th that's very important for us that we can that we are able to see this um, and everybody's able to do their uh, to, to be able to see and stand next to and 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 hold you know be able to talk to a, a pro athlete it's very yes. important for us yes. so 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 David we just learned that 14 minutes 43 seconds of running and uh, unfortunately we have to come to the end of our broadcast i must say thank you to you for sharing your expertise and being behind uh, the microphone with me here today as well as all our viewers out there we hope you uh, uh, enjoyed this ride with us it was phenomenal uh, the adrenaline was pumping and with that we really need to say it's a wrap